Hi, I'm Case Lowe, co-host of the Open the Voice Gate podcast. The one question I'm constantly asked when it comes to Dragon Gate is how do I get into the promotion? Well, stop asking and start listening to the Open the Voice Gate podcast released every Wednesday on the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. For exclusive news and show reviews, look no further than the leader in Dragon Gate coverage, Open the Voice Gate. This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. What do you guys want to talk about? You are listening to the flagship podcast with your hosts, Joe Lanza. So no, I'm not taking it. Listen, I am more than happy to be the butt of a joke or to be self-deprecating. I think everybody knows that. They've been listening for 10 years, okay? Not on this one, because I am not taking an L on this, okay? So, no, that's, yeah, no, this one I'm not taking, okay? And Rich Crage. Joe, are you ready for Roadblock End of the Line? Roadblock End of the Line. 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 Roadblock End of the Line seems to have some buzz. A lot of buzz from Roadblock End of the Line. It really does. And we are live on the flagship podcast. I am Rich. He is Joe. The final show of 2023. Here we are. Rich, you excited for our sports style presentation podcast? Today? Absolutely. I'm all fired up for it. Yeah, we, I, we've been doing sports style presentation for about 11 years now. We always liken ourselves to a more of a sports radio show than uh, your, your typical pro wrestling podcast, mostly because we're entertaining and not boring. Uh, but yeah, more, more, yeah, we, we've always kind of had a sports style presentation, I believe in, in the way that we do things here on, uh, the flagship 11 years and counting. I was going to leave that other issue alone, but you're out here taking shots at boring podcasts. <laughs> well, they all are. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm tugging my collar over here. I'm tugging my collar. Um, I genuinely was going to leave that one alone. Oh, uh, and I still, and I still am going to leave it alone. I still am going to leave it alone. Maybe you're champing at the bit. To... No, I am really not. All right. No. Well, uh, for the eight people who understood the last 15 seconds of the <laughs> <Enjoy>. show. Um... <laughs> Welcome to our best of 2023 show. It'll be a clip best. show mostly. Uh, Joe and I will kind of intro the clips. Then we're going to step back and let, uh, you know, let, let the, the highs and the lows of 2023 kind of take you. No, we're not doing that shit. Can you imagine? No. That'd no. be easy. You know. I'm I'm afraid just the fact that you said it was going to be a clip show. Half the people probably X'd out. <laughs> but, um... Probably gone. Yeah. But the beauty of a podcast is the download counts, baby. So it, it doesn't matter. You listen for your uh, 48 seconds and, uh, you know, all the all the checks clear on that one. You know, all of our all of our sponsorships. Oh, that yeah. Accumulated this year. <laughs> all of those. Yep. All of them. Uh, yeah. Those, the, those sponsors will be happy. Indeed. All of them will be very, very the happy. Fucking mega mind or what was that one? <laughs> all the magic mind, sir. A magic, magic mind. mind. Yes. Yes. It's improved hey, no my ads. mornings. Let's yeah, no, no. Ahead. I was gonna I was gonna say it's improved my mornings, but uh they're done. So Yeah, so you know, you gotta pay us if you want us to tell the people that, that Mega Mind has improved our mornings. Um and our days. But you gotta pay for that. You gotta pay for that. Yeah, 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 sure. Um yeah, but I'm ready for my uh sports style presentation podcast, and it appears as though Tony Khan is ready for his sports style presentation wrestling company to return. Uh, at least if you would believe his words on the uh, media call that we once again weren't invited to earlier today. So uh, I, I think we got to start there, right? I mean, that was the theme of my Thursday Dynamite review earlier today. But um, yeah, I mean, apparently Tony did some 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 science experiments and some control groups. We had a control group. We and, had an experiment, a control. And uh, yeah, the end yeah. result was, I guess, this stuff that is the ethos of this entire company and, and got us to where we are and is inarguably better than the other bullshit uh, is better. So I, and I, Tony, I agree. I think you should go with the sports style presentation instead of uh dumb bullshit that nobody cares about. That, that's what I would go with. So I, I think he's, uh, he's on the right path there. I mean, in all seriousness, we've kind of been talking about this the last couple of weeks, how a lot of these continental classic matches have absolutely been popping quarter hours, you know, and there, there've been, episodes of collision where there's been three 
tournament matches, and those are the three highest viewed quarter hours in both total viewers and demo. I right, mean, Collision's been these are real facts. It, it's been wild, and I wrote that piece uh, over at Flagship Patreon like three or four weeks ago about how that's the way forward, and that like look at the numbers and look at the trends and look at the graphs and look at how these matches on collision are undoubtedly helping collision get back. And they were getting better and better ratings and creeping up and creeping up. And then we have just this last week, uh, a, a show on a holiday weekend with some pretty decent enough competition that is the highest again. Like they just keep getting back to where they were, you know, in, in, in October when the show had a little bit more momentum, uh, momentum and wasn't against high level football or whatever. And then we see yeah, the continental classic has just one by one by one helped collision, get back on the map and get back on track now. And look, we're kind of done with the the peaks of you know football season for the most part on on Saturdays. There's another. I think there's one more week that's probably going to be tough once you get to the playoffs or whatever. But in terms of college football, you've, you're pretty much done there. Uh, all the big college football games are going to come up this weekend, and then obviously you know next Monday or whatever. So that's pretty cool. So you're good there. And 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 yeah, like you know NFL, you're going to have what one or two more weeks. I forget how many Saturday uh, playoff you know slates they run against, but. Now we're kind of in the clear. So, yeah, you got Collision back on track by by doing the Continental Classic thing. And, and, and yeah, I, I think – and, and you know, sort of what we mentioned as well, and we've mentioned it a couple of weeks ago on, on the show, you know, too, and, and reiterated a bunch of times that the, the Continental Classic was kind of a cheat code for AEW, kind of a cheat code for Tony Khan to, to, to get back to really what this company was. But it, it also – it's not hard to just say, hey, talented wrestlers, go out there and have a good wrestling match. And all these talented wrestlers go out there and have a good wrestling match. It's the same thing with the pay-per-views. It's, you know, you can, it's, it's really easy to tell very, very talented wrestlers go out there and be very, very talented. But what I think also we – I don't know if we've mentioned this or maybe, maybe we talked about it uh, you know, off air or something like that. But I think one of the cool things about the Continental Classic as well, and, and we were front and center the entire time pounding home how the rankings were good and the AEW rankings needed to be there because it kept the booking honest. Every win and every loss had to matter. Every single thing you did had to matter. And, and you know, some people got caught up in, oh, well, you know, this guy, why is this guy third and that guy's fifth when he's had more wins and all this other dumb shit and then a bunch of dummies that couldn't understand it or, or just didn't get it or whatever. But what we said with the Continental Classic, again, is it, it, it keeps your booking honest. It, it's another thing where every win and every loss – had to matter. You couldn't just say, ah, yeah, have this guy win, and who cares? You couldn't be, who cares? Every single result had to matter for this tournament, and I think the end result has been a tremendous tournament that that really made, I, I don't know about you, but it really made me feel like, okay, this is what this company can and should be, and then Tony saying that on the, on the media call today you know, was another great moment too, but it's still kind of a show-me-don't-tell-me thing because the end of Dynamite this week was absolutely atrocious, and the pay-per-view, who knows what we're going to get at the pay-per-view with the devils and all that sort of shit. So, Yeah, I, that's I, true. But, and you know, I did address this on the on the show review. I don't think you can drop all that stuff cold. You no, don't have no, to no. then, you, you know, you do have to let those stories finish up and play out. Um, do you shift them up a couple weeks or a couple months and, and kind of expedite them to the finish line? Uh, maybe. But, you know, I don't I don't think you just... You know, and I don't think they're going to do this or anything, but I'm just using this as an example. I don't think you just show up next week on TV and Tony Storm has been completely retconned back to her old gimmick. I mean, you just can't do things like that, right? So you have to, um, you know, and look, here's your thing. Just because Tony Khan said this today doesn't mean they're going to see it through. Like you said, you know, it's like, okay, you've told us, now show us, you know, and, and, and you know, I would still keep them at arm's length and they got to earn it now because this has almost been a full year of a total tonal shift in the company, which now Tony Khan himself has admitted to. Okay. So, you know, another victory lap. I'm not going to do that. I think I've rubbed it in the faces of all of my enemies and the people that were wrong. See, victory laps are great. Front. And I know we love victory laps here, but you know, what's also good being kind of quiet about it and letting those people stew because those people know, they you know. know what I mean? They know, they know now. And that's, yeah, they know now. That's, yeah. I think that I, I like that a little bit more. I mean, I, I, gloating is fun and dancing around and taking that lap is good, but also just kind of, you know, knowing in the back of your mind that those people are thinking about how they're wrong is a little bit more rewarding for me, honestly. Do you want, do you want a new angle on this victory lap? Uh, sure. One. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's get a new angle here. I'm taking credit for this change. No one was on top of it before me. I noted, Go for it. You should. That, I, I noted that the show was going off the tracks back in February and March. I'm the one who hammered it home. I'm the one who took abuse from people who, um, 
you know, uh, thought I was crazy, thought I was grifting, you know, thought I was seeing ghosts. Um, and it turned out I was right. <laughs> rents do, rents do. <laughs> yeah, rents do, right? But uh, I, I was, I was ahead of it. I was on top of it before anyone, and I was ahead of it. And I'm the one who really banged it home every single week on those reviews. I didn't care who got mad at me uh, inside the business or out. I didn't care who didn't like it. And as the as the calendar started to turn to the fall and more and more people were, were seeing what I was seeing, including people inside and outside the business, by the way, uh, and, and then people started seeing things my way. I, I, I'm taking responsibility for – uh, the pressure that was put on the company over the course of the year uh, that I, I think I had a lot to do with driving it. I really do. You know, people are going to call me nuts. They're going to say, yeah, Lance is at it again. But I, I really believe that. And, and you know, then it became a thing where other people were, were catching on later in the game. But, you know, I was first. And, and I was putting the heat on before anybody else was. And I was putting the heat on the hardest, whatever small amount of influence we have. Um, so, you know, that, that's a new angle on this victory lap, you know, if in fact they go through with it now. Okay. So what Tony was saying today is he, he literally said he did control groups. He, he termed it an experiment and the one control group was what they have been doing, which is the, for lack of a better term, they didn't use this term, but I'll use it. The sports entertainment stuff. Cause when you phrase it that way, people know what we're talking about and the experimental group as he termed it which was what he called the allocation of sports-based old-school wrestling into the show. And he straight up attributed the recent ratings increases to Collision, which we have been noting for weeks, yep. mm -hmm. to the more sports-based presentation, despite going head-to-head -head with the NFL on Saturdays for the last couple of Saturdays since college football ended, which is a much stiffer competition than the college football. And uh, and then he went on to say that he, he that they will move towards – a sports-based style of presentation based on tangible fan feedback, meaning facts, meaning ratings, minute by minutes, quarter hours, uh, et cetera, okay? So those are his words. He didn't say it's something they're thinking about. He didn't say it's something they're considering. He didn't say it's something that they have to, you know, they're going to continue with their little science projects. No. His words were they will move towards a sports style of presentation based on the tangible fan feedback. So whatever data that data, Tony and data Mookie and uh, whoever else is working on that, in that company came up with here uh, showed them that they believe that the AEW fan base has responded very well to what you just said at the top. Surprise, surprise, just doing a good wrestling show and telling your stories between the bells and telling good, simple, old school pro wrestling stories. The term old school was used today, by the way. So, uh, and this is what we've been preaching. And this is what I've been preaching for like 10, 11 months. And this is the way to go. Because this will help you win back the AEW fan that you that you may have lost over the course of the year. You know, who, who, who were run off by the other company and run off by you mimicking the other company. And this will help you win uh, uh, viewers and fans who you will be their first choice as opposed to chasing fans where you're always going to be their second choice. You're always going to be their second choice because you're never going to do sports entertainment the way WWE does. They've got the history. They've got the years. They've got the brand loyalty. They've got the brand name. And, and quite honestly, they do that shit that we don't like, but they do that shit better than anybody and better than anybody else. Oh, of course. Yeah, so yeah. you're not winning those people over. They're getting a much far superior version of that, and they always will there. So if you want to be a challenger brand and be different, this is the route to go. And now they have data to back it up. And what is the other thing that we've been saying all along? The one thing I've been saying all along is, look, maybe this pivot to sports entertainment will work for AEW. We just have to see what the, how the numbers bear it out. Maybe this will catch on, and this will be the future of the company, and this is going to help them get hot. I, I, I said all along, I don't know. Their dad is telling them the opposite. Right. Their dad is telling them what we were doing before was working. Now, listen, we came on here for months and said what they were doing before. They were doing better ratings and 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 drawing more fans to shows before they started this. Yeah, more people issue. were going to your show. More people were watching your show. More people were following your show when 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 you were this as opposed to that, <laughs> whatever you became and, and, this year. 
and 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 surprise, surprise, Rich. Guess who finished on the plus side year over year in attendance in the fourth quarter of 2023 after being down for most of the year prior? AW. What changed? What changed in the fourth quarter? Continental Classic. Less of this horse shit. Yep. Continental Classic. And they were five, I think they were, uh, I saw they were 5% up year over year in attendance, which isn't any kind of massive number or anything. But when you were down in attendance all year, when MJF's out there playing grab ass with Adam Cole and playing with inflatable alligators, you know, this quarter they're up. I mean, you know. Did you hear, so it, I don't, it, just, just from a tonal aspect as well, those crowds the last couple of weeks, especially like this week and last week, those crowds were so loud and that was what remember when the crowds died and we were like those AEW crowds are dead they're never coming back those ones that were just because those fans were gone right they were they weren't going nuts for matches they didn't care the bell would ring and they would get quiet or we were like man what the fuck is happening here we we have completely lost the plot with AEW that's not the case anymore man bells pop we're getting bell pops people are going nuts there's big I mean it, it is and they're 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 getting excited about wrestling matches and wrestling and you know what for all the, hey, what's the story? Uh, they're not telling any stories. There has been no better story in this company this year than what's been going on during the Continental Classic. Up and down the entire fucking, from Daniel Garcia to Eddie uh, Eddie Kingston. You know what I mean? There are stories, 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 stories. Maybe they're not being told in the WWE sports entertainment backstage promo or pre tape way that a bunch of people think that the only way you can tell pro wrestling stories. No, they're being told in the ring with guys winning and losing. And that is how the stories are being told. And God damn it. If you, if you can find a better story this year than Eddie Kingston, you know, <laughs> vanquishing his demons and, and, and beating Brian Danielson and cutting that great promo that he, I, I don't know if it's, I, it hasn't made air yet. I think it's on, on YouTube or whatever. And I know it was pot, getting passed around on, on, on Twitter as well. But Eddie Kingston talking about, we don't sing, we don't dance, we fight. This is pro wrestling. This is what this company is all about. You got those guys out there. You got John Moxie coming out right after Eddie Kingston's done beating Brian Danielson, saying, you're scared. You know you can't beat me. Yeah, sure, you you beat one demon, but you can't beat me. I mean, that is, that's wrestling, man. Daniel Garcia saying, I don't know if I believe in myself anymore. Do I have any reason to believe in myself? You got the stuff with Jay Lethal and, and Mark Briscoe. I mean, just incredible stories. Andrade just using, you know, the low blows and the and and the and the you know the exposed buckle. You have Brian Danielson fighting through and, his and eye Miro, injury. And, and, like and, 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 and Miro waiting for him for when it's all over. Yeah, you know, right. They, they, like yeah. and fuck and off that, yeah, with Dan, these aren't Danielson, stories. Fuck off with yeah. you're not telling pro wrestling stories. Fuck you. These are pro wrestling stories. These are the pro wrestling stories that have been told for for decades upon decades upon decades. Outside of that one company, that one company has told processing stories one way. Pretty much everybody else has done it another way. And you know what? That company didn't always tell stories this way either. Sometimes this company did tell stories this way that we're talking about right now. So, yeah, th- it's just this idea that there's only one way you can tell processing stories and have processing characters and have gimmicks. Fuck off with all that. I mean, we, we what we've seen over the last month is 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 better stories than any of the other grab ass bullshit you've had the rest of the year that are, quote unquote, stories. The story been... of Tony Storm is she says words funny. Oh, great. What a story. Yeah. The story yeah. of the devil is I don't fucking know what the story of the devil is. There's guys <laughs> that come knows. out and they do stuff sometimes and now they're the ROH Tag Team Champions. That's the story of the devils. You know what I mean? Fuck off with those yeah. being good stories. Give me Eddie Kingston and that story over all your bullshit sports entertainment stories. The only men I could think of that obsessed with the ROH tag team titles are Rhett Titus and Kenny King. So <laughs> it they, might be they them. must be the devil. Honestly, they must be the devil. I'd pop. I'd um, pop for that. I'd pop for so, a little Rhett Titus. Little, you know, <laughs> I don't think I would hate that. Yeah. So it, it, it appears as though, at least according to the lip service today, that they're going to do exactly what we have been saying to do. I mean, we say we don't take victory laps. Really, we're taking another one because we've been preaching this for months. Right. Um, don't worry about the people who only know one way to tell pro wrestling stories, stop chasing them and mucking up your show and ruining it for the fan base that you already cultivated. Do the things that you can do well, that the other company won't do cultivate your own fan base and then slowly grow from there. And don't worry about what kind of a lead they have either. Who cares? It's irrelevant. Just be be the best AEW you can be. And that's be the best pro wrestling company you could be. There's you're not right. there's no other better pro wrestling company in the world than AEW. Be that. Be the best at something. Don't be second best at anything. Be the best at what you can do better than anybody else. That 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 has been I, I think we've followed that, you know, on on this podcast. That's and on what the a website. challenger brand is. Right. 
it's we're not trying to be second best at anything. We're trying to be the first best at what we're doing, and that's what AEW should always yeah. have been: is be the first best. Right. Nobody else is doing pro wrestling like they're doing pro wrestling in America. Do it. Be that. Be number one. You were not going to be number one in the sports entertainment category. You got kind of close. You got kind of close. I wouldn't, you know, you got close because Vince McMahon was an idiot and 2019 was a disaster for that company. But no. And you brought back Punk. Right. And you brought back Punk. And And it was a perfect storm. Yeah. You you handled COVID better than anybody else. 2019 WWE was in a tailspin. When they came back in 2021, they still had no idea what they were doing. You brought back Punk. You had Danielson. You had all that sort of stuff and all that momentum. You got pretty damn close. And that's that's something to be lauded, and that's something to be you know I, I, absolutely pat yourself on the back. But yeah, that you, you're you're probably never going to beat them head to head in any of that dumb shit that that people like Eric Bischoff are still hanging their hats on. You know, all, all these many years ago. Don't worry about that. Be the best pro wrestling company you can be. Nobody else can do pro wrestling like AEW can do pro wrestling, and 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 they've proven that over the last month. And I believe if you do that and you keep making stars, you'll see results. You know, I, I, believe, I firmly believe that. There's wrestling fans. There's wrestling fans in this country and in this world. They're, they're, out they're there. absolutely are. They're out there. They're out there. And you can make new ones because there's people who may be who may be attracted to this dumb, stupid hobby um, who who aren't attracted or can't be or won't be attracted to WWE's style because of all of the things that we don't like about it, the way that it's presented and how it feels so hokey and fake and artificial and corny. Uh, you know, so maybe there there's new fans to be made who just want to see something that has a little more of of an adult edge or something. I don't know if adults the right is adult the right word. A little more of a uh, just a little more of a, a non plastic, non artificial, non hokey veneer. Yeah, maybe just an authentic, out there an authentic sports like show, sports with the volume turned up. I mean, that that style presentation. That's when go. I became a wrestling fan. You know, a lot of people listen to this yeah. know that that you and I we became wrestling fans after we became sports fans, of course, because it's like, yeah, this is like sports, but the volume turned up a little bit. Cool, this is kind of fun. I enjoy this. Yeah. yeah, if you want to sprinkle a little goofiness in, I've never said that they should never do that. As much as I, I'm not going to like it, because you know me, I'm no fun Lanza. But you want to sprinkle a little goofiness in. I, I've said a million times, you know, a two or three hour or four hour wrestling show, not everything is going to be for you. Okay? You can't expect it. It's great if it is. Right? But not everything's going to be for you. The problem is the overall tone of the company had had been taken over by that stuff. And that's where the problem was. And that's why I believe that their house show business declined and that they struggled in some other areas as well. And I believe that setting that aside and, and has helped them slowly rebuild. And Tony Khan today confirmed that with his own internal data. So that's open and shut. You know, there's a lot of people out there who will, who will never admit that I was right. Um, some of them don't understand how the boss baby meme works. Some of them are some other people who just will never admit that I was right. But it's, uh, but I was, and you know, the company themselves, uh, have, have now admitted that the guy in the big seat has admitted that, um, you know, I was right. So it, it also just, um, it, it proves that you don't have to be loyal to any, uh, a, a brand. You have to be loyal to whatever you like. You know what I mean? That, that I think is another thing that, that I'm proud of this podcast and I'm proud of this podcast network. Cause I know the good and the bad and the hungry podcast was also along with us on that. And a lot of the writers as well, uh, at voices of wrestling.com were, were, we were oh, yeah. one of the only ones that were saying, hey, this shit's kind of sucks. Like, this isn't very good. This isn't landing with us. Or, you know, little stuff here and there that we were saying. Like, a lot of other people were scared to say it. And, oh, rent's due. Or, oh, these guys must be this. Or they must be that. As if there's some ulterior motive for just saying, hey, look, I don't like this stuff. And I don't have to pretend that I like this stuff. And I don't have to pretend that this is the right move. And if, if, if I, I can say... I don't think this is the right move or, Hey, I don't like this. That's you, you can do that. You can, you can also divorce yourself from the business aspects of it as well. Like you said at the top, how many times did we say, I don't know, maybe this is going to work for him. I don't know. Maybe it'll turn around their business. I guess mm-hmm. we still fucking hate it. And I think it sucks. And I'm going to tell you it sucks, but Hey, maybe it turns the business around. I wasn't hopeful on, on that happening. And I, I, I've seen this enough times and I've been around this block enough times to say, yeah, I don't, I don't think this is going to work for you guys the way you think it's going to work for you. But Hey, if, if you do, and you got some internal metrics that are saying this is the way to go, then sure, I guess, but I'm still going to tell you, I hate it. And it sucks. You know, it, that, that's okay. You're allowed to do that. And I think that's healthy to sometimes put people's feet to the fire and, and, and not have to throw your head in the sand and pretend things aren't the way they are. If you don't like it, you don't like it. You don't have to pretend, you know, it's okay. It's fine. But yeah, we, 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 you know, a lot of people very publicly, Oh, you guys are this and you guys are that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you know, 
Oh, come crawling back. <laughs> you know, we're, we're right more than we're wrong. You know, we are right way more than we were wrong. So uh, it's all, all I got to say. I don't there, know but... how many. I don't know how many times I have to prove my perfectly honed instincts. I mean, it's just it, it, time after time. I'm so right. But here's the here's the thing. The next question becomes: Do they see it through? Okay, right. Because next week's dynamite is the first dynamite in what two months or something like that. However many weeks it is, with no Continental Classic eating up a massive chunk of the quarter hours. So that's where the rubber meets the road. And again, would I expect drastic changes and storylines dropped? And no, I don't expect any of that. And I don't think that would be prudent either. I really don't think like a hard reset or something is the way to go. Right. But are we going to, without the benefit, without, like you said, the cheat code of the continental classic, which kind of forces you to stay rigid and stick with the plan. Okay. Can they be disciplined and can they show us now the changes that they're telling us they're going to make? That's the question. And, you know, after all of us peacocking around for the last half hour, putting ourselves over, doing our, you know, partially tongue in cheek, um, you know, victory laps and all of that, I'm not 100% confident that that's going to happen. You know, I still think that there's some. Uh, now, now, listen, I will say this. Tony in his uh, media scrum after the ROH pay-per-views had had some interesting comments that a lot of people may have uh, not noticed or whatnot. He was talking about Twitter. And on one hand, he put Twitter over and said it's, it's this he feels it's the app where all of wrestling comes together, which I think is a little overstated. I think he has a, a warped view of Twitter. I think it brings certain corners of wrestling fandom and, and rest and the wrestling business together. But this idea that Twitter is a total reflection of of what people do. Look, Twitter is full, filled with nothing but mouth breathing morons, and they really weigh everything down. And but we all know Tony's addicted to the app. But the other thing he said was that he, and I'm paraphrasing, is that he feels like he's doing a better job of ignoring a lot of the criticisms that yeah. he sees on social media, on Twitter, from the outside, and he's just focused on doing the best show he can do, like we talked about earlier. The problem is he didn't specify who exactly he's ignoring, right? So that's, like, dangerous. <laughs> right. Like, if, if he's ignoring us, that's a mistake, right? If he's ignoring people who are smart and know what the hell they're talking about and understand, you know, the best way to – then that's – but but now, I think – and, you know, when you take those comments, I'm doing a better job ignoring stuff, combine it with what he had to say today, and when you add in a little dash – of I want the fans to put their money where their fucking mouths are with this tournament. Does it all come together a little bit? Do you have a little light bulb moment? Was this all, uh, it all, it all kind of makes sense now. I, I think this may have been a deliberate plan to say, all right, well, look, maybe some of this criticism is valid. There's only one way to find out. Give people what they claim they're looking for in this company. And what better way to do that than to give them a fucking G1? the purest uh, possible exam, you know, thing we can do to show people that we can be a sports-based wrestling company again with sports-based presentation. We'll give them a G1 because the G1 for the last decade in pro wrestling has been the gold standard in what hardcore smarks want out of pro wrestling, right? We would all agree with that. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And then, he, and then, that's, and then that's what he did. And then he challenged us. He said, all right, well, I'm going to do this. And we didn't know he was running a little controlled science project, right? But essentially what he was saying when he said, put your money where your mouth is, is all right, I'm going to do this and we'll see. We'll see. And if, uh, you know, Jay Lethal versus, uh, name someone else in that block. If Jay Lethal versus uh, Jay White is going to pop better quarter hours than the acclaimed being goofy with their fucking scissor belts, then we're cooking with some gas here. Mm -hmm. And apparently that's what happened. Apparently that's what happened. So, you know, it's uh, a, and, and, and maybe that statement was his way of saying without coming out and saying, Hey, look, this is now or never. If you guys want this company to be a, you know, you can't come out and say that, but that was maybe his way of right, telling right, the fans. Right. Or, or even a what, possibility too. I, I, I do. And I think there's also a possibility too, that, that maybe, 
perhaps and 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 again i'm just i i have no idea i trying to get into the mind of of, of tony Khan's a dangerous thing yeah, yeah. Uh, as well but is it possible too that you know on along the same lines of what you're saying is it possible too that maybe he needed some sort of data to back up ah you know what like like in his heart of hearts yeah. i know there are a lot of yeah. people that were saying like oh i don't think tony likes this or i've always thought tony was this guy or this guy or this guy or whatever do you wonder if maybe in his heart of hearts he knew he needed to do something like this something drastic that was just bare bones pro wrestling do it and then go back to whoever he needed to go back to and say hey look look at this look at these numbers look at these ratings look at these attendances this is the way forward i'm sorry i know we gave your shit a try Here's the way forward. Here's what we're doing from here on out. Like you know, another I mean? December, a December 2019 moment. Right, right. Where, where, and, where and he that's... finally put his foot down and said, "All right, your vision stinks. I'm taking the reins." Right, right. And and again, like maybe I'm, we're giving him a little too much credit or or, or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. like he's a very analytical guy. We know that entire company was yeah. based off of that sort of stuff, and that's you know his one of his other many shoot jobs is you know doing analytics for for football and stuff. So so maybe even if he didn't agree with what was happening before he and, and wanted to make the change. He, he in his heart of hearts knew that he probably had to provide something, some sort of data or some sort of backing to say, Hey, look, just so you guys know, like the reason I'm making this change and the reason we're going in this direction now is, is this the cold, hard facts that prove this stuff is going to work better than this stuff. And so, yeah, I, I love your ideas. <laughs> the ideas are great. Yada, 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 whatever lip service you have to play. But you know, th- this is, this is what we're going to do moving forward because the, it's the proof is in the pudding. It's in the numbers here. This is what we got. I don't know. I, 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 again, I'm just I'm, we're just guessing. We're just talking out here, you know, talking out loud. No idea what's actually motivating this stuff, but um, yeah, it, it, it's it was a very encouraging couple of weeks and, and a very encouraging week uh, in, in the world of AEW. I'll definitely say that. Yeah, and you know, and he was really on the media call. You know, he opened it up saying, "I'm excited to talk about booking philosophy and all of this." So he couldn't wait to tell people about his little controlled experiment here. I mean, he couldn't wait. And it took a couple questions. Listen. It took him just answering. Well, he he was waiting for the, <laughs> the right questions, and none of these dopes asked him. So then so, I, I forget what his answer was. It was a question that was just like, and he was just like, "All right, well, let me tell you about the booking philosophy here." Yeah, I love it. I yeah. love it. That is, I love it, when he goes like, to these like, calls and he wants to say something. And he hints at it numerous times, and everyone's just like, "Hey, uh, how does it feel to be in Texas again?" <laughs> just you know that. When are you come? When are you coming back to Dayton, Ohio? Right. You know that kind of you know. And he's just like, "Fine, um, all right, let me tell you about booking philosophy." <laughs> like, like remember the time when he so badly wanted somebody to ask him about contract tampering with WWE so badly yes, <laughs> yes. it's like yes. four questions in and no and he's just like yeah been a lot of stuff going on a lot of been reading a lot of stuff in the news and yeah there's been a lot of stuff out there right and everyone's just like yeah so uh yeah. what do you think about uh, the difficulties of booking yeah. a pay-per-view <laughs> he's just like uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. and then i forget what he did he was just like you know what look <laughs> he just decided fuck it all right i don't fine. even think he ever got around to it it's like it's like when triple h had a prepared answer for cm punk questions and no one asked him. <laughs> you know and it's, it's like and then he's just looking around. It's like the John Travolta meme from from uh, where he's just looking around. Like, right. Oh, no one's going to ask. You know, that's what you know. It's it's crazy because these people are so incompetent. But uh, but yeah. So you know, he he clearly wanted to get this out there today. But now that you've said it, you got to deliver. You know, because people like us are all fired up. You know, I'm out here rallying the troops. You know, and and saying that we fucking won. You know. But this better not be Dewey defeats Truman. Like you got to fucking deliver now. You know, you know, like you've said you're going to do it. Uh, you know, you better fucking do it. So you know, you, you give a little grace period and uh, and all that. But that 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 cheat code of the Continental Classic is gone. It's gone. So now it's all right. Well, now you have two to three segments on both of these shows now to fill with what was an easy way to deliver what you're saying you're going to deliver. And now you have to find ways to do it. Right. And you have to deal with all these different egos and everything in the back. And, and look, we've heard how many times as MJF said that he is trying to give people a different flavor of ice cream. Well, your boss just told everybody that that flavor of ice cream lost the war, right? That flavor of ice cream sucks and it's, it's unsuccessful. It's not selling. We put your stupid ice cream in the cooler and it's not selling and nobody wants it. So we're going to take your ice cream. My point here is how do you, well, how do you go to your top star and your world champion who has been known to be, I don't know. What's the word temperamental or 
I, I don't know what word to use here in this spot, but I think, you know, and, 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 and say, Hey, look, this is the direction we need to go. This is the data. Can you have that conversation? Do you have that conversation? Do you let him continue in his own little corner of the company? Uh, I wouldn't. And, uh, th- that that plan. The, these are all questions now right. that need to be answered. Right. You the know, the, the idea of hey, go play in your own sandbox and don't play in these guys' sandbox. Uh, that that didn't work. We tried that already with this company. <laughs> it didn't work very yeah. well. So yeah, I exactly. would I would not do that. I would find a different uh, thing to do. But uh, yeah, th- this is big boy time. This is Tony Khan big boy time. You know what I mean? Like the, we've always talked about this guy who who tries to be a people pleaser, tries to be everything to all people, and hey, that's admirable and that's good, but you're running a, a, a major company here. You're running a pro wrestling company. Sometimes harsh conversations have to happen. Sometimes you got to sit a guy down and say, your shit sucks. It's not working. You know what I mean? Like, and, 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 and Yeah, and, and, and listen, to be fair, though, and, and here's another, you know, last night they just introduced a new wacky zany character, a girl with a butcher knife, Holly, or whatever the hell that was. So it's not like there's not some of these silly ideas that are still getting through. You know, and, and, you know, that's obviously not going anywhere productive, you know, where she's doing this psych. Did you see that? She's like doing some kind of crazed serial killer. Yeah. I don't even know what that is. I, yeah. The girl from QTV and her name, you know, I, I think that's who it is. Um, Tits McGee from QTV. FKA the, the Harley Cameron name. or whatever. Yeah, FKA Harley Ho- Cameron. Oh, is yeah. it Harley or Ho- I thought they called her Holly. I thought they changed. Well, her. maybe they did. I don't know. She, she is Harley. Is she I don't know a- if her, her, her name was Harley. I don't know if she's now something. I don't know. Who cares? Yeah, but, you know, so, you know, and then you see that, and it's like, oh, well, we're still introducing, so we'll see. But, again, it's not like you can't have any of that shit. No, no, no. It just, it's it's know. mucking up your main events. And that, I think that was always right. – I've been always consistent about, you know what, because people would say, ah, well – what about this? <laughs> they bring up and it's like, all right, yeah, that's what that's a story that happened on their TV that sucked. I know, I understand that, but the fact that now we're since February, like you said, basically since February, we've been bogged down in mostly the main event scene with a bunch of horse shit. I mean that that that's the stuff that hurts. That that's the stuff that really stings. One dumb segment here and there, uh, you know, a, a dumb character here and there. That's always going to happen. It's pro wrestling. That that's, that's I, I'm no nobody is asking for that not to happen. That happens on every pro wrestling company forever. I mean that 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 is going to be a thing no matter what. But yeah, it, it's it's bogging down your main events, doing that sort of stuff. That's the part that bothered me. That's the thing that really got me. And then, like you said, when it was just, it felt like the entire direction of the show and the entire you know energy of the show was all going in that one direction, that's that's where it's bad. When it's it's the quote unquote brandy segment, the thing that people misuse all the time that that you know I started on the on the TV reviews when I filled in. Yeah. And everybody just uses oh no 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 now you're complaining about the brandy segment. No, no, no. The brandy segment was why are we spending all this time complaining about one bad segment on a show that was fucking phenomenal? And that was what I would always say about Dynamites is that we right, would have right. An hour and 40 minutes of kick-ass promos and great matches and all that sort of stuff. And then Brandy would go and do something stupid. And then that would just take up the entire conversation for the next week. Is like, yeah, 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 that was good. Uh, that Brandy segment, I really hated that. It was really bad. And I was like, don't worry about the fucking Brandy segment. Worry about the other hour and 40 minutes that was phenomenal. The so pro- then the idea being that, you know, on, on you, when you have these great shows, the, the one bad segment, you then term that the brandy segment right. whether brandy was in it or not that's the oh that's the brandy segment we could just you know it's kind of like uh gymnastics scoring the olympics it's the low score we right. can just eliminate it right eliminate like, the low score and let's talk about yeah. everything else there was one bad segment don't worry about that bad segment that, that, that that's okay a bad segment's fine but yeah when, when, when it's inundating the entire show and the look and the feel and the presentation right. of the show and the pre-tapes and and just it, it felt like a just a complete swing, like a complete 180 direction in the, in the complete opposite direction of everything that the company was. That's what the complaint was. That's what it was. It wasn't just that there was a zany character or a stupid character. It, it, it's not that. It's, it's just the, the tonal shift that occurred in the company very quick. I mean, throughout the summer and throughout the fall. That's all it was. I mean, that, that that's that's so, yeah, you're going to have a couple characters here and there. You're going to have a couple weird stories here and there. Nobody's asking for... For that, nobody's asking for guys coming out in black trunks and 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 wrestling and then leaving the ring and that's it. You know what I mean? Like, there's going to be promos, there's going to be characters, characters, there's going to be gimmicks. But yeah, the the fact that the entire company looked and felt different than it did the prior three or four years, that's the scary part. And 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 that's why we were saying it when everybody else, you know, was was too scared to to address it. And oh no no no, you guys are just being too hard. Or oh no, you guys have just you. And we always said no 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 no. We've been the same. They've changed. We're, we're, we we have right. always been the right. same. We are very consistent about what we like here and what what and 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 what we think is is good pro wrestling. They're the ones that changed, and and now it's being confirmed by the boss in the company that things changed, and 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 he's aware of that. 
and it was done in an intentional way to compare one to the other. It looks like the good guys have won. Uh, but look, I look, I, I'm gonna hold them at arm's length because we're usually on the losing team they, here. So I I, I will Well uh, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, and I'm not raising a banner just yet. I am not raising a banner just yet. Well, there was a time where I would I would I would trust them to do what they say they're gonna do, but they they've over the past year they've earned my distrust. You know. It's um what's that saying? It it takes it, it it takes a really long time to earn trust and you can tear down trust in, in, in 10 seconds. Right. It's, and, and, and that's the truth, you know, and it's, it's they for, for, for 10 or 11 months here, they've just, you know, totally burned my confidence in what the vision is. So if you're telling me that the vision is going to go back to what the old vision was, well, now you have to reprove yourself. Okay. So, you know, in all seriousness, I am going to hold them at arm's length and, you know, I'm, I'm not going to watch dynamite next week and like a scorecard and, you know, you look, you have to, you know, these things are going to take time. They have to get through this devil thing and everything else. And, you know, we see where that goes, but um, an encouraging day. If you are a fan of pro wrestling, when a lot of 2023 was wondering if, if, uh, if pro wrestling was just going to well, disappear from American television, pro wrestling. And um, there were times where it was very concerning, you know, and, and, you know, and I, I don't know if we're out of the woods yet, you know, like I said, prove it now, back up what you're saying. But Tony did seem very, very uh, enthusiastic about all of this. Mm-hmm. Um, some other things in the press are real quick, and then we'll talk about the pay-per-view. Um, says he has a good relationship with Tanahashi. And he put over Obari as well. We'll talk about that story later. Tanahashi taking over as the New Japan president. So um, we'll get more into Tanahashi and, and breaking that down. We won't do that now. Um, he talked about Kenny Omega's hospitalization, changing the card. Again, we'll get into that when we talk about the card. Um, any other things that you noted specifically from the presser that warrants being mentioned? Not a whole lot. Uh, uh, yeah, it wasn't. Uh, it, it was really just that stuff. The experiment stuff was the thing that caught my eye more than anything. Oh, he did spin the ratings a little. He said they're down 10 percent right, total right. viewership and in this quarter and, and raw is down 8 percent. But, you know, he 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 kind of skirted. That was total viewership. And he's always been the proponent of 18 to 49 for obvious reasons. And right. they're down way more than raw in the 18 to 49. And that was kind of that's promoter spin, you know. And you could sneak that past maybe, you know, some people, but you're not going to sneak that past. I think, I think Thurston even did a big write up on that, if I'm not mistaken. So I, be, I believe you're not going to slip correct. that yeah. past. No, no, you're no. Not, yeah. I mean, that was just total promoter talk, but his point stands. I mean, you know, if, if, you know, I mean, they're, they're down more in the 18 to 49, but his, his overall point was look, uh, and he tried to spin it as if they're down with the same rate as television, but that also, I believe was debunked um, that they're down more than the rate of, of the loss of tele of cable television homes um, year over year. But again, I agree with him though, that that doesn't preclude them from, from scoring a new media rights deal next year. Right. Right. He so, he did mention about the point. WBD stuff. I guess that we, we should mention that. I think he said that, you know, their, their relationship is strong with WBD. You know, he's excited to work with them 2024 and after. Um, yeah, he keeps saying that. Say, <laughs> it's, it's um, a little friend zone stuff. It's like, all right, well, when are you guys going to date? You know what I mean? I, you know, as, as somebody who, it, who spent a lot of time look, in the friend zone throughout his life, it's like, yeah, I don't know. You keep telling, you know, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. If we ever dated, it'd be great, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like you never, you're never dating, so maybe like maybe try something else or you know try somebody. But yeah, he keeps talking about it, and it's like, all right, yeah, maybe you know. And then you know, he did mention Ring of Honor as being like a big part of the, and that's I know he always brings that up, and it's like, dude, nobody wants Ring of Honor. <laughs> Just secure an AEW deal and don't worry about Ring of Honor. If it happens, it happens. But uh, he, 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 yeah. Um, I think his end result was essentially that, you know, he'd need to be floored by an offer to get away from, from Warner brothers. Cause he loves the relationship so much, but I don't know, man, just get an offer from somebody. <laughs> ultimately, ultimately when you do as well as they do on Wednesdays, I I'm, I'm still not concerned about them. No, no, no deal. Um, now, Oh, here's the other thing that he mentioned that I thought was interesting. He said that they are quote being very active on the free agent women's wrestling front, which a lot of people took to mean that they're back in play for uh, money. So, I don't know. I certainly, if, if you're going to tell people 
that you're being very active on that's, the free agent that's where they're going to go. Their, their mind hey, doesn't listen. go to Deanna Perrazzo. It goes to it goes to Mercedes Monet. Yeah. yeah, it ain't about Julia. Okay, Try, like, no disrespect to either of those ladies, but that that's a, a, immediately where, um, you know that that where a comment like that is going to be taken. And if you don't want it to be taken that way, then you shouldn't phrase it as strongly as you did then. So, because that's with her still being a free agent, that's immediately what people are going to think. So, um. Yeah, we see from that standpoint. Uh, if if you know, money is back in play, and I think that was all the anyway. Let's move on. We've done. Uh, I guess he did say he did did say that the devil storyline will probably be coming to an end. That's at, true too. Well, yeah, he said big reveals or not maybe right. reveals yeah, maybe not use, end but, but reveals or, or yeah big, big steps, steps in, in in so yeah. that's. Hopefully so, we're and going. I guess it's a good transition into talking about the card itself. Yep. So it's AW World's End uh, coming up, obviously, this Saturday. Uh, it is available on Triller TV, the former Fight TV. If you are outside of the U.S., uh, make sure you use VoicesOfWrestling.com slash Fight. That account, uh, that, that, that link still does work, VoicesOfWrestling.com slash Fight. I guess at some point i got to make a VoicesOfWrestling.com slash Triller. But uh, for right now, uh, if you want to order that show, if you're outside the U.S. or uh, – Maybe taking a one-day vacation to someplace that's not the United States. Uh, you can uh, order that show over at VoicesOfWrestling.com slash fight. But uh, more importantly, we will be live immediately after the show uh, this Saturday with AEW World's End 2023 Instant Reaction Live. Uh, that'll be on the $10 tier of flagship Patreon.com. so make sure you subscribe uh, to that. As we always recommend to people, don't wait until the sh- day of the show. Don't wait till an hour before we go live. Don't wait t- until we go live. We always get those people when we say we're going live, and then we get a flood of new people subscribing. Just do it now. You're going to want to listen. You're going to be home on Saturday. You want our reactions. We just told you how right we are about everything. You know you want to listen. So anyway, VoicesOfWrestling.com slash Patreon. Patreon.com slash Voices of Wrestling or uh, flagship Patreon.com. $10 tier uh, gets to the instant reaction live. And hey, if you're new here, uh, you're going to get a couple days of uh, bonus audio uh, as well. You're going to get all the other stuff that we have uh, on our Patreon. Uh, that's another big reason to subscribe early and not uh, wait until the day of. But uh, yeah, that's World's End coming up this Saturday. Uh, main event, of course, is going to be MJF versus Samoa Joe for the AEW World title. Uh, we had on uh, Dynamite, we had Samoa Joe, quote-unquote, turning on MJF, hitting him with the chairs. We have the Devil henchmen winning the ROH Tag Team titles. Uh, we have all these ads stock, uh, stacked up against MJF, and I feel like we're... I don't know. I, I've seen a lot of people think that it's definitely going to be Samoa Joe, and that makes all the sense in the world because MJF's coming in hurt and all this sort of stuff and the Devils and yada, yada, and all this sort of stuff, and it all makes sense for Joe to be the champion. But, man, a lot of this MJF run's been very Hulk Hogan-like, so uh, stacking all the odds against MJF does not mean that he's not going to overcome those odds uh, to me. So I, I don't know. Where, where are you at with this match? Are you, uh, if you had to make a prediction or make a bet, what, what, what direction are you going with MJF and Samoa Joe? Well... I don't think it's impossible that he loses. Can I can I present a counter argument? Sure. Uh, you weren't going to say no. I don't know why I phrased that. <laughs> no, Joe. Question. We have to do the. <laughs> I'm not Brian Alvarez. We could. We have three hours. We got right. plenty of time. Let's do it. <laughs> I guess you could have said no. Um, <laughs> um <laughs> I'm the one tugging collars. So. I think that you'll get, bl- uh, you'll get blamed anyway. It's it's perfect. It's great. I could say well, anything, yeah, and mean, then you get blamed. It's perfect. I catch every stray. <laughs> we all know that. Um, That's why I do you it. Know, so, uh, we, I mean, we were catching strays all week for something we had nothing. To do, <laughs> I had nothing. So I didn't even know what's going new. on. I had no idea. No. I got a I got a text message it's, saying, "Hey, what's going on?" I'm like, "You tell me, pal." I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No. You, no. Your first thought was, "Ah, oh, what Joe do." That was your first. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. After what did Joe do? Yeah, that's true. The the text yeah. message just say, "Oh, what did Joe do now?" But uh, then right. then I was informed that uh, yeah. Right. Anyway. I could do far less damage without that password, but your it was it's still your mind still goes directly to uh, what did Joe say this time? But um, no, I think there's an argument that MJF loses. Look, his body is in shambles, and part of that has been worked into the kayfabe, but that's legitimate as well, right? He could use the time off. I think we would all agree there. Um, the other thing is if we're going to advance this devil storyline and possibly finally reveal, how does the devil, when they reveal themselves, whether it's Jack Perry, whether it's Adam Cole, whether it's 
uh, Britt Baker, whether it's Tony Khan, which would be the absolute oh. funniest outcome. <laughs> imagine, whether... imagine Tony getting <laughs> on that soapbox about pro kind of wrestling that, yeah. and no sports entertainment and sports space. And he takes that hood off and ah, fucking Mark my ass. Fuck yeah. you, MJF. <laughs> that would be. Who's the fucking Mark now, Max? Right? Yeah. I mean, it all makes sense. No, but, um, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be Tony Khan. But whoever it is when they do the Scooby-Doo reveal and take the fucking mask off, all right? <laughs> dumb as this story. Um, how stupid how... is this fucking story? God damn it. Yeah, it's so dumb. You can't win with these kind of things. Anyways. No, it's all, you all you're going to do is either before. disappoint. It's either going to be, and that's the problem with all these whodunits. Whodunits in wrestling yeah. history suck. And Vince Russo yeah. never learned that lesson. He did them a thousand times because the reveal is either somebody that was so obvious that's going to be like, oh, okay, well then, like, because if it's Adam Cole, it's like, well, why the fuck didn't you just beat him at all in, you dumbass? Why did we spend eight months doing all this bullshit when you could have just beat him then? Like, what, what are we, what are you doing here? And like, well, yeah, well, no, well, see, Cole, no, like Jack Perry is like the obvious one, right? Because he's been gone all this time and it kind of, the, the person's kind of shaped like him, like slight of build. Adam Cole falls into the other category, which is it either ends up being the obvious choice and everybody rips it for being obvious or it ends up being someone that with a million logic holes, which would be the Adam Cole. Right, right. Like if it's Adam Cole, like he's the logic hole problem, and then everybody rips it. You cannot win. Right. You, you, can't you, get, win. you get the Vince McMahon higher power. It was me all along, where everyone's just like, oh, all right, well, yeah, that was uh, kind of boring. Right, right. <laughs> and then, or you just get completely random, where it's like, all right, well, now try to explain this one. <laughs> it's just Rikishi. Like, Rikishi. Right, right, right. I did or, it for or, The Rock, and it's like, Right. We weren't even in the company you then. Get, <laughs> Were you even in the company at that time? Like, or you get anticlimactic. Ric Flair is the Black Scorpion. Like, right. uh, it's not the Ultimate Warrior. What do we waste all this time? You know, you cannot win, right? So you, you can't. <laughs> so but, my, but my, but my point here is, how do you do the big step in the story and a potential reveal if MJF wins? That kind of takes all the heat off of the person when they're revealed. Right. Because, okay, if if Jack Perry reveals himself as the devil, he has to cost MJF the title because if he doesn't, he looks like a fucking geek. And and there's and then it's it's like the gimmick is dead. All right. Now the gimmick is literally just Rhett Titus and Kenny King is the ROH tag team champions (laughs) because the because the fucking leader is a dork who couldn't get the job done. So those are my counter arguments. MJF could use the time off. And if you're going to have the devil come out and reveal himself and align himself with Samoa Joe and all that, then it has to cost MJF the title. Otherwise, you're totally emasculating the heel. This is so dumb. Yeah, it's it's like the Survivor Series egg where it was like, thank yeah. God it was just the gobbledygooker. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> like, right. if it was the Undertaker <laughs> emerging from an egg, like he's dead. You know what I mean? He's over. So sometimes you just have to do something so dumb that nobody even cares about it. And you just go, yeah, 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 we know it's dumb and stupid. But like, they've invested too much in this thing. This has been the, so that reveal has to matter, but it's not going to matter. You know what I mean? It's going it to be. Look, the only way it works is if the way they do the reveal and the angle is so fucking cool that right. it's undeniable. But you can't, the reveal itself, you know, it's, it's, it's such an uphill battle, you know, especially when you, you drag it out this long. That's the other thing about it. I give look. Remember when MJF came back from his sabbatical after he lost to the Wardlaw and everything? Yeah, and they did it all in one night. That works because you're not dragging it out months and months and months. They did it all in one night. He had his all. He he had his this whole stable, Big Bill and Stoke and Lee Moriarty, whoever else was in it. I, the Guns maybe wasn't it? The Guns. Um, doesn't matter, but the point, and then it all got blown up because CM Punk pulled another CM Punk, and you know I I felt <laughs> CM bad Punk for was at like, it that. again. Yes, because CM Punk was at it again, so it didn't work. Yeah, but. we never found out where any of that was going to go or what was going to happen because yeah, you, you know, Phil Phil filled. So you know, but but that was an example of doing it all in one night and where it kind of works. This is going to be a letdown no matter what, but I do think it opens up the door for him losing. Plus, it would behoove him to go away for a while and not only heal up but kind of put all this crap behind him, you know? And and here's the other thing, Cole's still out. So if he's going to do something with Cole, you know, you kind of have to wait for Cole to get, how much longer can they stall and do other shit before Adam Cole comes back and they do whatever they're going to do with that? Right. Well, Whether you Cole's mentioned the, 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 the Tony Khan issue of, of like, how do you tell them, Jeff? No, it might just simply be, hey, you got to rest up your body's disaster. Cole's not ready. We'll get back at it, you know, in, in, in the spring or whatever when everyone's healthy. And then you can just kind of kick the can down the road and maybe you never do that. But, yeah, I mean, that, that might be the easy answer for, for, for Tony there is that 
MJF's hurt, and it's a perfect opportunity to have him take some time off. And, and, and he's been running his body, you know, ragged or whatever. Take some time off, and, and, and that might be the easy way. Now, will MJF listen to that and agree to that or whatever? I have no idea. But, yeah, I think this is a perfect opportunity to have him take some time off, end this stupid well, story, and move on. He did do his fourth, I'm listening, I'm sorry, oh my it's going to be better. <laughs> we can't, I hear you, I see you. We can't be doing right. these every week. How many times are we going to do this? He's okay. Like legitimately, this is at least the third time. At least. I think we're at four or five. Easy. Look, I feel bad piling on this guy. I really do. I I think he really does love wrestling. And I think he does care. And I think he does try his best. And I think he really just wants to be entertaining. And I, and I do truly believe he wants to be an all time great and a legend and all those things. And I do think he, he wants to do well for AEW and and he wants the company to succeed and and I, I truly believe all that I really do, but at some point it's like how many times are we going to do this? Yeah, I see you, I hear you, I understand it's not great. It's like it's it's time maybe to look in the mirror, <laughs> okay? At these <laughs> at this shit that you're coming up with, and maybe just some self examination and some you know. Like it just, it, dude, it's just bad, you know, and it's, 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 it's all wrong. And maybe it would work if you worked somewhere else. Right. I, you know, I, maybe that crowd would eat it up, but I'm not even sure. I, this stuff is just, but the point here is, come on, man. I, again, show don't tell. Right. That's kind of been our theme over the last few weeks. I mean, stop telling us that, you know, it's bad and just make it not bad anymore. <laughs> right. Just do, do stuff. That's cool. Like you used to do stuff that was cool all the time. Right. I, ha, what was remember the glowing praise we'd have for this guy? Yes. Like the CM Punk view. We would and, take the victory laps that we were the first place to tell you that this guy was going to be a fucking superstar. Right. I, we, you, you were ahead of it seven, eight years ago saying this guy is going to be a superstar. And then I was when ahead he, of it before anyone knew who he was. <laughs> right. And then we were, he's you in, know, he's still in our D. We have old we have DMs from him. <laughs> just saying, oh, thanks, guys. Like, oh, I can't believe your record. Like, you know. From before, who anyone even knew his name, you know, we were talking about him. So it's like, I, you know, I know that. It, well, I, and like, I, and Sean Cedar puts this in the note of chat room. He had like a match of the year contender and maybe the match of the year with Brian Danielson back in March. Like it, it was there. Yes. It was not Which that long pray, ago. Yes. Yes. So don't, don't sit there and keep t- just go do stuff that's cool again. I mean, shit. His, listen, his matches have been great. I can't complain about the matches themselves. No, no, no. The Omega the match has been good. Yeah, all in. All Wembley. in fucking stunk. Yeah, Wembley was gar- garbage. Absolute garbage. Wembley was one of the worst things I've ever seen. And I'm talking about world title matches. Like, the thing with the Righteous was one of the worst things I've ever seen. Um, uh, Wembley was fucking garbage. You know, but the rest of the title matches, whether it's Brian Danielson in March, whether it's the Samoa Joe match at, at, uh, at uh, Arthur Ashe or, you know, those have been great, you know, and he, and he, and he works hard. I didn't particularly love the, uh, the last one though. Um, the bad leg selling match. Oh, the J the J white one. That one stunk too. The J white match stunk too, but you know, for the most part is his matches have been, have been really good. And and it's just that, you know, the in-between has been atrocious, you know, and he keeps saying that he knows and he, and he understands and he gets it. Well, now's the time. Just do cool shit again. Then wait, we're, Everyone is waiting to fucking re-embrace this guy. I, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't pleasure me to constantly bury him for six months. But I have to talk about what I see. You know, I, I have to tell you how it is. And it hasn't been good. And he admits it isn't good. <laughs> like, I'm not even bragging. Everyone knows it's not well, good. And, that, and that's like, the thing, I'm too. Like, people for... people defending it. And it's like, even this guy is like, I hear you. He's I see you. you it's not good. <laughs> he's, he's been saying this for two months. It's like. <laughs> or longer yeah it's like, <laughs> right. all right so anyway no that's that i think he could lose for those reasons so you know it, it, you have to have the devil come in with some impact he's all banged up and if tony really is restoring the feeling and changing direction then it's not the worst thing for mjf to go away i agree and reach forget physically how about mentally <laughs> get back you know recharge and it's probably been rough for him. We all know that he's a, a look. He would tell you he's a sensitive. He has told us he's a sensitive guy. 
like on the fucking show, he has told us in promos that he's a sensitive person and he, and he, it, you know, absorbs criticism and he sees everything. And it wouldn't be the worst thing for him to drop this title, get your body back right, get your mind back right, recharge the batteries, get some good ideas flowing again, watch the show from the outside looking in instead of inside, you know, and 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 with a different fresh some of viewers set of eyes, come come up with some angles you can do with some people. That would not be the worst thing at all. It really wouldn't. No. And then disappear until revolution or whatever their next fucking pay per view is called. I don't even know. Is it revolution? The one, I think re- yeah, this thing. I I don't think they're doing one in between. I, I think people were waiting to see if he was going to announce a pay per view between that. But I, I feel like no, we're we're not. Or I think he confirmed I, you know, that we're not going to revolution. Look, and that one in Greensboro is going to do some of the best business the company has ever done. They don't need MJF for that. No. So that's a perfect time for him to just go away for a while. So oh yeah, that's my counter argument to no, I do believe that that he could lose the title. Yeah. And plus, you know, they worked it into where it's he has an out as a babyface. Well, his he, his shoulders hurt and Samoa Joe fucked up his shoulders some more and he's probably going to get jumped by 19 guys right at at, at the show well cuz now we're also getting into very weird territory too if he wins this match it's like oh my god now we <laughs> you know what I mean? we, we we laughed about the Jay White stuff yeah. we laughed about yeah. all these other things of him overcoming odds if he overcomes the devil's henchman the attack by M- <laughs> by Samoa Joe an actual legitimately injured shoulder uh his dislocated hip or whatever it is and still goes ahead and beats Samoa Joe it's like man like because he kind of got that on Dynamite a little bit where I was just like, dude, do you really need a pipe shot and the guy having foot on the ropes? Does the devil's henchman have to have his foot on the ropes, too? It can't just be an attack and all this sort of stuff and a pinfall with a, you know, it had to be, oh, he also has his feet on the ropes. It's a little too MJ Hogan for me. So I, I, I'm a little, little, little worried from that standpoint. But I, I agree with you that I think the, the right course of action, even though I don't know that like long term, I want Samoa Joe to be my champion. I, I, I still I think the long term best solution for everything is that Samoa Joe, that that whatever this devil shit happens comes out costs MJF the title Samoa Joe wins it you take him away from TV for a little bit and then you do whatever you're gonna do with Samoa Joe he's probably gonna be a transitional champion anyway to whether it be a swerve or a hangman or something like that which I think is probably for the better to well start they planted on... seeds for a hangman match right. already right 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 so I mean they had their so who knows what's going on there but the chat kind of exploded I don't. I don't I didn't think that I misrepresent. Look, the, the the MJF DM is from like when he was a rookie and he he noticed that we spoke about him on a podcast or or posted about him on Twitter or something. It was just a standard issue indie wrestler thanking us for a little publicity. Right, right. That's all. I probably okay, talked about him in an down. AAW show or something. He said, Hey, thanks, or something like that. Yeah. It, it's, and it's, it may have even been earlier than that. Like he was when he was still doing like Northeast Indies when I'm like, hey, there's this guy getting buzzed. Right, right. It was super early in his career. And it was just this, like we've got DMs like that from other like it's nothing, several people it's, <laughs> across the world yeah, of wrestling. It's like, yeah, that's happened. Yeah, everyone's like, oh, post the DM. It's nothing. It's just an indie wrestler saying, yeah, hey guys, thanks, guys. thanks yeah, for right. talking about me. This is going to help my career. That's all. You know, from a rookie wrestler. It's, you you want to if you want to see DMs from wrestlers, you want to see the Eddie Kingston DMs. Those ones are much more fun than. Uh... <laughs> Or those, those are emails. Those are emails. <laughs> those are good. Well, I got unless I got you've been getting DMs. No, no, no. These are back from years ago where I'd, uh, I, I, you know, he'd be on an AAW main event or whatever, and I talk shit about it, and it's perfect, Eddie Kingston. Because he'd DM and be like, fuck you. What the fuck do you know? And then he'd come back like a minute later and be like, hope you enjoyed the show, pal. Everybody likes their own thing. All right, oh, bye. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, perfect stuff. Like, the first thing would be like, fuck you. Go kill yourself. You're a piece of shit. Fuck you. He never, he never got to that level. But just essentially just like, fuck you. What the hell do you know? Uh, no, I'm doing it because I love it. And screw off and fuck you or whatever. And then, like, literally like two minutes later, he's like. Nah, I mean, I hope you appreciate the show. Love you. <laughs> Thanks for the love. Have a good one. You know probably, what I mean? So, like, probably, <laughs> probably, probably, probably working anyway. Right. right. Exactly. Exactly. So the yeah, the right. Maxwell Jacob Friedman DM. I will read it here for everybody. Salacious stuff from everybody. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Quote on April twenty eighth, twenty seventeen. Thanks for that tweet. Appreciate the love. The end. That's it. That's what all the I was tweet saying. was. I, wasn't I don't saying. remember, but it was probably us being like, "This guy's good." The end. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it was probably. I, I. I. It was probably. <laughs> hey, keep your eye on this guy because. And it was. And he wasn't. He wasn't even. Mac, he was Maxwell Jacob. Um. He wasn't even Friedman yet. He was still Maxwell Feinstein, right? Jacob Feinstein. Yeah, he was still Mac. He. So this is so old. Okay, this is just an indie wrestler saying, "Hey, thanks for you know tweeting about me." That's all. 
So <laughs> the DMs uh, have the been chat, read. There you go. The chat can con- there's the salacious DM. That was <laughs> that was that was even more anticlimactic than that girl who claimed she had the goods on Jericho and oh, it turned out to just God. be and he was just like <laughs> what the fuck. Yeah. God, what a wretched app. God damn it. Yeah. What a terrible, terrible app. Oh, um, that's the worst. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was like the worst. That Like the devil reveal can't be worse than that. Like it cannot possibly <laughs> be worse. That was the worst one. What did, it, what did he say? Like, oh, you call yourself a journalist and then that was it or something? Or it wasn't even that, right? Well, it was, oh, you, hey, you're a journalist now. Smiley face. Right. Oh, man. And everyone was like, <laughs> oh, man. Everyone's like, you've been building this up for months. Wow, you really got him. You got him. Oh, man. Um, Time's yeah, up. So. Canceled. <laughs> it's like. With no, uh, with, with no context provided or anything. Right. And, um, you know, he could have been mocking her for all we know. Right, I'm sure he was. Stupid, but, yeah, we don't have you know. any other. Um, you know. All right. Well, great. You know. Yeah, but uh, anyway, what were we even talking about? Before? Someone said show the Kingston emails. Uh, no, <laughs> we're not going to show those. Um, no, I mean, and, and you know, and, and those Eddie aren't. cut a kayfabe. He cut a kayfabe promo on us, too, on WrestleMania. The WrestleMania weekend where we pissed off AIW, yeah, yeah. remember? Yeah. And then they had him cut a kayfabe promo on us. Like, not us, like, the, which was obviously directed. It, 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 they meant us. You know, the critics talking bad about the show. You know, it's on site. Let me catch you in traffic. It's just fucking the guy's working. But um, anyway, what what match were we on? What did we talk? We about? only got the main event. Yeah. We only got MJF and Samoa Joe. Uh, let's no, talk about pick up the pace a bit. We do have to Good pick transition. up the pace. Uh, speaking of the aforementioned Eddie Kingston, uh, he'll be in the Continental Classic Championship final match uh, for the Continental Crown. Eddie Kingston versus John Moxley. And this has been just awesome build up here. Eddie Kingston beats Brian Danielson, finally vanquishes, you know, the, the, the cloud hanging over him, finally beats Brian Danielson after never being able to do it. Then you get John Moxley, who just comes out and, and puts over Eddie and, hey, yeah, good for you. Then puts him right down and says, "Yeah, you know, you still ha- can't beat me. You know, I've I've been I've been nice to you. I've been your little boy, and and all and I, and you know, you've been my little boy, and you've been all this sort of stuff. And it was just a great promo from Moxie, a great you know retort from Eddie Kingston saying, hey, "I'm not one of your goddamn young boys, you asshole, or something like that." A lot of a lot of bleeps, a lot of, a lot of not good live mic uh, stuff from Eddie Kingston, but uh, yeah, really, really great stuff. And then. I don't know if you saw that video that I was talking about a little bit earlier uh, where Eddie's in the back after getting taped up, getting his shoulder taped up, cutting a promo on on, on Moxley and cutting a promo at the Continental Classic uh, backstage. Just great, great stuff. And then this – this I'll take stories like this all the time, man. Eddie Kingston, John Moxley for the the, 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 the crown, you know, to, to, to win this triple crown thing, whatever it's going to be, which we're still kind of not entirely sure. I honestly don't care because I know this match is going to kick ass. I'm really excited about it, and I think the story has just been phenomenal from both ends. I – didn't have any problem with either guy winning. Um, I wish I could be as as into Eddie Kingston as other people are. It's one of those things I just <clears throat> doesn't hit me on the same level as it hits everyone else. Sometimes it does. I thought he had a really good tournament, and I, and I do think the the his story is an excellent one, like you laid out. Um, sometimes his matches though just mm, they just don't hit for me like they do. They hit for others, and I wish that they did. But I didn't have a problem with him or Moxley winning. Um, yeah, I know a lot of people had a problem with Swerve not advancing. Um, I didn't. You know, I think he's going to be fine. He's going to win I think up. That, that, that man won up. Yeah. Lose up, the, you mean. Lose up. No, lose up. That's what I meant. Because he he immediately, yeah. and they and they did it very deliberately, I thought, on Dynamite. Yeah. They talked to him. They didn't talk to Jay White. They didn't talk. They went backstage, and they talked to Swerve. And Swerve. And he sh- cut a great promo. He's cut a great promo and, and, and yeah. basically told you his motivations are to move forward. You know, and 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 how I, bad he wanted it, and mm-hmm. he didn't get it, and he, yeah, and now he's gonna vanquish Keepley, and and it's very smart because now he gets a a, a, a big a, win, a high profile win four days later, mm-hmm. right? He's gonna be fine. In fact, I think it was cowardly to shoehorn Jay White into the match, and I think I think Moxley should have just beat Swerve a second time, and I think that would have benefited Swerve because Swerve could have then cut a promo. Angry that he lost to the same guy twice and vowing revenge somewhere down the line. And I'm going to do to you what I did to Hangman. And and we're not, I'm not done with you. And I'm never, you know, it, it would have worked better, I think, if he lost to Moxley again. But they took the coward's way out with the booking, shoehorned Jay White in so Swerve wouldn't have to take another pin, 
I think he should have taken another pin. I think it would have been more effective if Moxley beat him again. Because now that gives Swerve a clear main event level roadblock to overcome. Oh, shit, this guy beat him twice. And then when he beats John Moxley, it's that much more impactful. Right. So I would have done it that way. I would yeah, have been a they, coward they went with it. the tact of, of Swerve saying, hey, I didn't get pinned. That guy got pinned. You know, type Yeah, of thing, I don't which... like that. I would have preferred if he just got pinned. And if you're going to do these G1 style tournaments, if you're going to do these Japanese style leagues, right? You got to show some guts and guys got to lose. People. Yeah. Guys got to lose. That's how that works. And the, and the thing about that is it ends up working in your favor. Anyway, it ends up working in your favor when you're forced to beat people, because now you have built in stories and built in revenge and all of this other stuff, you know, it, it's like, it keep, it's like the same thing when they have the rankings that you talked to, it keeps you honest as a booker and actually forces you to do cool and creative things when you have to beat people. So that was a, I don't care what anybody says. A lot of people disagreed with me last week and I'll, I'll fight any of them. Oh, that three was, that was a cop a, out. That was a fucking cop out. For that's sure. a cop out and a mistake. And it was bullshit. And the other thing I didn't like about it is you have this clean tournament, this great clean tournament going on for two months. And now all of a sudden Jay White's swinging chairs at people right in front of the ref. Yeah. We're brawling in course, the crowd and swinging chairs yeah. and going, Oh no, there's DQs no DQs in a three way. No DQs in a three way. And it's like, Oh man, horseshit. It was horseshit. It was just a terrible idea from all angles. And it really, for me, it took the wind out of my sails for the whole, for the block final. I couldn't enjoy it because I thought that they just shit on the rest of the tournament by doing a three-way to decide the winner. And then this guy's, once this guy started swinging chairs, I'm out. I, I'm like, I'm like Shark Tank. Oh, you know what? I'm out. Yeah, they, I, I'm not interested in this anymore. I just want to get to the final now because this match is doing, I don't care how good this match is. You, you've. You did this clean tournament. Now you're giving me this shit. This right. is the shit that I don't want. This is the shit you told me you weren't going to give me. Right? So the three-way was a mistake. I'll fight anyone on that. I'll debate anyone on that. Uh, for, for a multitude of reasons, the three-way was a mistake. But, yeah, I have no problem with, with who's in the final. I would have preferred they did cross-block semis and had Kingston maybe beat Moxley first and then beat Danielson in the final. That, I think, would have worked better for me and would have worked better for the story. Because... He had just lost to – we just saw Eddie Kingston and Brian Danielson a couple of weeks ago, and Danielson won. We're immediately doing the rematch in the block final. I think it would have worked better if Danielson was the big bad that he had to overcome in the final. Now, I like that these are the two opponents he's facing. Don't get me wrong. I would have switched the order, but maybe that's a nitpick. Yeah, that's fair. I I, I think I was fine with it because I think you, you – you could do either way, honestly. Like you said, I, I I think you could switch it, and then he could vanquish, you know, Moxley. But then he still got Danielson to, to to beat, and that's still the guy in front of him. But the idea of of it being Moxley, I think it works for me pretty well because it, or works for me pretty well too because it's like that's also a guy that's been synonymous with Eddie throughout this entire company's history and the entire time Eddie's been in the company, Moxley's been his guy or whatever. You know, what I mean, it's been both both friends and enemies and and partners and opponents and that sort of stuff. So. It, 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 it works for me on both standpoints. So I, I think you could do it either way. I don't think there was a wrong answer there. So I'm fine with what they did. I'm, I'm fine with it. Being, well, here's you know, the thing. Here. What if, Mo- what if well, we're assuming Kingston's winning? What if Moxley's winning? Uh, I no, so I, I am not assuming Kingston's going to win because I think, and I've said this from, from day one, that I think tortured Eddie Kingston is the best Eddie Kingston. I think it's better when he doesn't win. I like it better when he right gets with, as close yeah. as humanly possible, pours his heart out, he's crying, cutting these promos, and then Moxie just beats his ass. You know what I mean? Just beats it. Like, of course, you know, I'm not saying a squash match or whatever, but like Eddie gets so close, slow, close, slow, close. He finally vanquished the demon that was Brian Danielson. He finally got through to the tournament. He put all these titles on the line, and then he loses. Eats right. a DDT. And then he's questioning. I yeah. was on top of the world, and I gave it all away. Right. And I, you I know, did it I, again. I did it again. I was there, and, and I I'm not good enough. fucked it up again. Yeah. I was right there, and I fucked it up again. Yeah, that that yep. that's my favorite Eddie Kingston. Tortured Eddie Kingston is the best Eddie Kingston. Like you always say with yeah, Darby that's Allen. The, that's his whole energy. Yeah. Yeah, that's Sami Zayn, Darby Allen. There's certain guys whose energy is just tortured souls. And once he wins, oh. it's just like, all right, Eddie Kingston won. Yeah, he's just the champion. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I don't, mo- he, what he is is modern Dusty Rhodes. That's what he is. Yeah. He's modern Dusty Rhodes, and it the, the money with him is in the chase and the revenge. You know, it's not in, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, he's the best. <laughs> That's not the energy. That's the wrong energy for right. Eddie Kidd, just ah, like it was for Dusty. Crown champion, yeah. You know, he, right. he, he, best in the world. Yeah. Right. No, no. <laughs> right, no right. Dust, Dusty, Dusty won the NWA world title three times and lost it immediately because right. Dusty knew. Like, like, he even booked himself to lose it because it's like, he knew that was the wrong energy for him. People wanted to see Dusty win it. They didn't want to see him defend it. 
They want to see Dusty having to overcome an obstacle or get revenge on someone or, 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 you know, or chase. Right. So even Dusty knew that's why his title reigns were so short because there was money in him finally beating the villain. But then that's the, then the story's over. Right. That's Eddie Kingston. I agree. So, so I, I don't know what I would do in this situation. I'd probably have Moxley win. I could see how some people get upset by that and annoyed by that, but I think that's that's probably the right path forward. And and then you can have these guys chase the titles back and forth. And 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 I think there's just a lot more stories in Moxley beating Kingston than, like you said, Kingston winning, holding those titles above his head, and it's like ah, he put the titles on the line and then he won them. All right, you know what I mean? It's just like all right, that's a good happy go lucky story, but I don't know if that's the right Eddie Kingston story. I don't know if that's right, Eddie Kingston. Yeah, because then, uh, yeah, different. Because then, what did the tournament accomplish? We're right back where we started, where this guy has the belts. Right, right. As opposed to telling a true story here, where he gets as close as he's ever been, and oh, he's put it on so heavy handed. He's bringing up all the, all the old all Japan guys and talking about the Triple Crown and talking about his heroes and all these guys. And yeah, it'd be so good for him to have it in his grasp he comes down he looks at that title he looks at the triple crown he's talking about all the fucking kawada kobashi and he's talking about all these guys and then he gets so close and then he can't do it again and moxley beats him i think that's the yeah story. And you know it, it would and i think that it, it is kind of suspicious that when moxley came back from his concussion they they went right back to orange cassidy with that international title anyway instead of whatever they were going to do with moxley when he had the title because maybe this idea then came to fruition and they thought, oh, we're going to put this thing on Mox. That's another yeah. argument maybe in Moxley's favor for winning. So I don't know. We'll see. I, I you know, I, I'm obviously, um, you know, very much into seeing how they book that. Right. If Kingston wins, I'm not going to be upset, but I think the better story is Moxley winning. So we'll see you there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, this is going to be a much, much shorter breakdown here. AEW Women's World Title, Tony Storm versus Riho. Cool. You know what I find amusing? I think that, um, you know, Mariah May is going to wrestle next week. She said she actually, they're not even being subtle anymore. She said, it's all about Mariah. <laughs> all about you. Um, what I find interesting is Riho is just never around, right? We haven't seen her since she was running around with that pipe. The <laughs> pipe, that yeah, the, of course I remember the pipe. I remember the Riho um, pipe. She's never around. Timeless Tony is on TV every week doing her shtick. And Riho is a million times more over than Tony Storm yep. is. It's mm-hmm. it's it's incredible. You know, it's um, you know, Tony Storm just way more over than the cartoon character. So yeah, I don't have a lot to say. Everyone knows how I feel about the Tony Storm gimmick. I think a lot of people who were into it are now kind of cringing a little too, and they're like, okay, the joke's a little old. Right. There's it's, one it's, it's this... a one note joke that doesn't have any depth to it for all the oh this is yeah. this is characters and this is wrestling and wrestling needs larger than life characters and stories and all that sort of stuff what's the character what's the story she says stuff funny she says tits she throws shoes great cool awesome. and she makes weird faces right yeah cool. I, I love it and she and she no sells mariah may you know but mm. at least that's part of the story because it's you know that's but yeah no it's um look someone like me is going to get fed up with something like this before anyone on the planet, <laughs> but it's kind of like a forewarning. Everyone else is going to follow. Eventually. It's, it was going to be this have... way. It was going to be this yes. way anyway. And everybody, you could just, you could just get out ahead of it and just say, this shit sucks and it's stupid and it's a waste of Tony storm. And it's only going to get worse because every time something gets a chuckle out of the audience, they have to lean in with the subtlety hammer and just go right. over the top with it. There's a way this gimmick could have been done in a way where we'd be praising it. You know what I mean? But it's mm-hmm. like the same it. Every everything had to be the subtlety hammer. And you know, and then that's where it went astray. But look, I Tony Storm almost has to win because he's gonna do a title program with May, right? I mean that and of course. Mariah May beating her for the title is the fucking story. And you know, so you know, it's a predictable finish. I don't know how you do Tony Storm Mariah May if Tony Storm's not the champion anymore. I guess you could do. You could have them trade the time. You know what? I don't you, fucking care. Can we move who on? Care? Yeah, who I gives even... a shit? You can have Mariah May try to come out and, and help Tony Storm, but then she doesn't help her or whatever. And then you have a so who fucking cares? Who cares? Who cares? Yeah, I'm just not invested in it and don't give a fuck. No, uh, well, you are invested in this, I'm sure. ABS, uh, AEW TBS title: Julia Hart versus Abaddon. Yeah, I don't know. A I lot mean, of dark, know, Ab- lot of dark, scary characters here. You got Julia Hart in her hat. Scary. You got Sky Blue and her crown and her cape and had abaddon and her 
hair and her tongue and yeah all right cool great love it I'm sure sky blue will be at ringside with julia hart um yeah i don't know i don't again i don't give a shit um how could you i i just it doesn't matter <laughs> i don't you? care yeah. you could trade this title if you want i don't what difference does it great make? yeah I, abaddon wins great who cares <laughs> you know i will mean? say this can i i'll make a quick sidebar sure. since we're talking about the women's matches i i'm already seeing people saying where's the women's continental classic fucking ignore can that. you imagine okay. with the current roster that with they have this roster yeah with this roster are you <laughs> fucking do you want to embarrass the women come on now listen this is what they should do and i uh, you know they need to what they can do with the women if you want to go sports based and all that bring back those tag team medals and do that fucking tournament again you don't have a women's tag team title in either company and i ranted about that last week right I don't know why ROH needs two different women's singles titles when there's already two women's singles titles on in under the AEW part of the umbrella. Why is there no women's tag? That was a perfect opportunity to do a women's tag team title in ROH. It would set them apart. It's something a little different, you know. So since you don't have an a, a any kind of women's tag team thing uh, title for for women's tag teams to chase under this Tony Khan umbrella. Bring back those medals that Diamante and and uh, Evilise had, but now you can do a much better tournament because the tournament they did the first time was fucking atrocious. It was during the pandemic. It had the, some of the worst wrestlers you'd ever see. We talked about it last week, but I think you could do a better tournament now, and you have more established, uh, um, uh, sort of uh, not tag teams necessarily, but there's. Like like Willow no, I, and Statlander. I think there and, is like unity. There there's there's pretty established unity. Like you said, you have Willow and Statlander. You have, I guess, Julia Hart and and, and Sky Blue, right? Or you know, and and uh, or you have uh, you know, you could do Tony bring in Storm one of the Tokyo Mariah Joshi. If you wanted you, to, and yeah, it. you could bring one of the Joshi teams from Tokyo Joshi Pro. You could bring those people in. If you really get desperate, you can go with Ruby Soho and Merce- Soraya or whatever. If if that's a yeah, problem. yeah, yeah, you have the yeah, you have those two. You have Mercedes Martinez and Diamante. You have a there's there's way the, the Athena the and Billy Ross, Starks the if they're back together now you know what I mean like there there's a lot of ways yeah, you can go yeah with it. the renegade twins you know so you have better talent and you have more established relationships between in in kayfabe among the talent where I think if you do a single elimination tournament and bring those medals back since you don't have women's tag team titles you can make that kind of a yearly thing and it's specific to the women you don't do it for the men ever right. Just like the Continental Classic is, is a men's thing. You have these tag medals for the women. Every year, the same time of year you do it, you look forward to it. Last year's winner have to give them up. And if they want them again, they got to get back in that fucking tournament and win them again. Right? It, it That, I think, is something that they should consider. Like, people really before, want to have a way worse Continental Classic with a bunch of not uh, women that are not prepared to be on that level. What good does that do anybody? Right. What good does that do anybody? Did everyone see Sky Blue blow about nine spots last night? You want to have her have six <laughs> matches in a row? Uh, Soup brought up a great point in the note of chat room. Sky Blue would somehow be in both blocks of the Continental Class. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> somehow, yeah. some way, it's so good. Yeah, yeah. You're like so in the good. blue box, Sky so Blue, and you're like, all right, Sky Blue in the gold box, Sky Blue. You're like, wait, whoa, whoa, hold on a minute. <laughs> fuck she was just in the gold block no? like, oh, yeah. you're like god damn it what uh, it's so good yeah. that is so good yeah but seriously that that's something different that the women's division can have and since they don't have tag team titles it wouldn't even be redundant right it's almost perfect and it has a history because it's something that was their idea now the first time they did it they did the dopey lethal lottery thing i wouldn't do that i would not do it like that i would do it to where the the natural tag teams that they have and the natural uh, stables that they have are the ones that team with each other and and you know and then just like the Continental Classic, you build stories off of it. You know, it's the same idea and it's something that would be unique to to that division and help set it apart and something you look forward to every year. Anyway, that that was my idea. Uh, AWTNT title no DQ Christian Cage versus Adam Copeland. Uh, so we had obviously well, Cage. Okay, listen. Yeah. No, go ahead. No, so we had the Cage Copeland match in Montreal a couple weeks ago, and obviously Cage won thanks to you know Nick Wayne's mom coming in and 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 turning on Copeland, and now we're you know they're fighting backstage and they're cutting promos and stuff. I, I, I'm fine with letting this this feud end, and this should be the feud ender. And I'm imagining that Copeland beats him here. 
I, I don't know if they're going to find some other way to get around this or someone else is going to turn on somebody or, or what, whatever, whatever you have. But I think it's time to end this. I think this is now a, probably a pretty good time to end it and move these guys on to something else. But uh, I don't know. I mean, the feud's been fine. I mean, Copeland's been just a guy on the roster, I think. And, and he's been a, a good hand to have on the roster. But you're paying that guy a lot of money to be a good hand. And I don't know if that's uh, a great uh, in, a return on investment there. But, uh, you know, I think it's been it's been decent. I've liked the story. And, and I imagine that Copeland has to win here. But I don't know. Do you see a scenario where Cage can somehow pull this thing out again? I don't know if it ends here. I mean... And I looked it up. You know, Copeland's had four matches. I would have guessed less. Um, but he has wrestled four times. Luchasaurus, the six six man with Darby and Sting versus Lance Archer and the Righteous. Remember that from Collision? Oh, right. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> what the that's hell? the one I forgot about. Then the the the, the six man at Full Gear, you know, obviously. And then the the TNT title main event in, in Montreal against Christian Cage. So this will be his fifth match. You know, he is full-time, and he's at TV just about every week now. He wasn't at TV this week because they didn't film that. They clearly filmed that shit in Texas because the Von Erichs and Brian Keith were involved in the pull-apart. Did oh, I didn't that? notice that. No, no, nice. Nice find. So, you have, I'm like, wait a minute. Ross Von Erich, he's not in Orlando. <laughs> he what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, in his gear, no less, right? So it's like, Oh, you always got to um, bring your gear. Always got to bring your gear, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and I'm like Brian Keith, like he's wearing the duster, like he's out there doing the <laughs> I did not I'm notice like, that. On. Oh wow! All right, I'll have to go back and check that out. You know, and it, you know, it, it's like it would have been wise to keep those guys out of there. You know, if you were, you're telling people this is happening in real time, you know, and then KM comes out, of course. Um, you know, in, in the, <laughs> oh, uh, I saw, Renee, I saw him, I saw him, of course. Yeah, yeah. in the old Rene Goulet role, you know, all yeah. those guys, the old uh, Chief J Strongbow. Jack Lanza, Rene Goulet, uh, Tony Gurria, the whole gang, right? The guys out there in the suits doing the pull apart. The problem with Kevin Matthews is he's twice the size he's as so anybody much bigger on the than everybody else. Yeah, he's fucking enormous. The guy is a beast, you know. So he's do- and, and even Edge, who's like six four, like he's still like a head taller than Edge and wider. Uh, so uh, yeah. Anyway, so no, I don't know if it ends here. Maybe it does. Uh, you feel like if Edge can't win the t- Edge. You feel like if Adam Copeland can't win the title from him here, how, you know, then he kind of starts looking like a geek, right? So he almost has to win it. But I don't know if that means the feud is over because then can Christian chase him? Is there another twist? I don't know. Yeah, it seems like we're, we're, we're doing, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like we need to progress some way in this. And, and I suppose you know, Christian's unit is, is growing in, in by numbers. So I guess there's some way that you, but I, there's no other direct like partners of Copeland. You know what I mean? Un, unless you're going to get into the sting and Darby's of the world or whatever, but I don't think those guys are going to uh, obviously, I mean, obviously those guys are not going to turn on him and, and, and join the cage thing. So I don't know. Yeah. I wonder where they're going to go uh, with that. My, my, um my big worry here. And uh, when Shayna Wayne, right. Isn't that Sh- it's Shayna Wayne, right. When she turned on uh, Copeland, how you doing? I was thinking, uh, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say no. Um, we're getting Beth Phoenix, right? Ooh, yeah, she's out of that company. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Shane is going to come down. Right. And she's going to start beating on Copeland. All of a sudden, the Glamazon or whatever the fuck they're going to call wait, her. What? Wait, hold on. What are they going to call her? Let's let's pull her up. Yeah, I don't know what her. Uh, well, let's. I don't know if I know what her actual. It's just Beth Copeland, right? Beth Copeland. Yeah, I Beth guess Copeland. she'll just be. Oh, that's Beth Copeland. Well, <laughs> well we solved that mystery quickly. <laughs> yeah, that took a uh, long time. To... <laughs> <laughs> Unpack that one. We yeah, got it, yeah. chat room. Don't worry, we got it. Yeah, uh, listen, chat. We. We, they're just gonna call her Beth, like the fucking kiss <laughs> right, song, right? right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we really worked ourselves into a shoot with that one. Yeah. Like, trying to. Yeah. Hold uh, on. Hold on. Let's find out what her shoot name is. <laughs> it's like, right? It's just Beth. Man, yeah. <laughs> Their last let me name. See what she worked as back in the <laughs> late nineties. <90s. Right. laughs> but that, that's she my own. worry. Oh, that, oh, her own, her own name. Yeah. Um, but that's that's no, where we're going here. Out. You're right. That's that's what, and and that's where you extend the story. It's, yeah, I mean that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now you do the two on two. Maybe versus. a hot mixed tag at Revolution. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because you know that uh, that Nick Wayne's mom. How you doing? I think she was used to wrestle. Right? She was a worker. oh was she a worker? I don't know. If she was a worker. I thought she was. I a, think uh... she was in the business. Okay. Like, I can't. I don't know if she was a wrestler. 
But I think Brian Alvarez, who obviously would know, I think he made a comment on one of his audios that she was in the business many years ago. Got it. I don't know if that means she was a wrestler, a valet, a ring announcer, a fucking timekeeper. I don't know. But I, she she's not like she's she's been in a ring is the point. So. um, Yeah. I don't know. What's next? Oh, there you go. That's what you're getting. Uh, Swerve Strickland versus Keith Lee. I mean, we know exactly what this is here for. Swerve's finally going to get that People are mocking game. this. Where do, you, where do you stand? No, it really, I don't mind. No, it's fine. It. It's okay. I, I like that they're not just letting it disappear into the ether. No, you know, both guys I, are I still like a little they're... upset about it. Keith Lee is like, you know, I haven't gotten over yeah. that. And Swerve's just like, hey, there's some guy chirping about me. Well, you know what? Show up on Saturday. I'm going to beat your ass. Like, I, there's nothing wrong with that story. I, I love it. Yeah, I mean, we we, we we mocked them relentlessly for not doing the singles match. I can't sit here and come on here and mock them for doing it. Right. I can't do that. And I think that, and I think that, like I said earlier, I think it's a good opportunity to get Swerve's hand raised after he, you know, didn't win the, the tournament. So um, I don't have any problem with it whatsoever. Now, if Keith Lee wins, that's not one that I'm going to say is helpful to Swerve. Uh, Swerve no, that would be win. bad. <laughs> that would be a, what are we doing here? What's happening? Yeah. yeah, that that would be a, uh, a a big warning sign there of of we've we've lost the plot. But no, I, I what I, if? Oh no! What if? <laughs> you no. know this is bullshit. <laughs> How did you know this was going to be bullshit? <laughs> like, have you been doing this with me for so long that you just yes. you know this is going to be? Because <laughs> you do the what if very playfully. There's a playful <laughs> what if. But go ahead, go ahead anyway. What if tattoo face man? And oh, come out. it's finally time for Trench. <laughs> we need right. Trench and the other guy. I forget what the other guy's right. name was. What if Trench and Parker Pordo or whatever, <laughs> what if they come out to help Keith Lee? Oh, dear God. And then Keith Lee goes heel. Huh? Huh? I, well, now that's. <laughs> I want to say, I hate to ruin it, but I believe Trench, uh, his deal expired and he was no longer a part of All Elite Wrestling. I yeah, don't know might be, about Parker Bordeaux. Been, also, no, man, who slid gone. into the DMs, by the way, Parker Bordeaux. Many, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Many years ago, Parker Bordeaux uh, slid into the DMs. They were uh, not for any particular reason. I think he was just like, this is going to be a big year for me. We're like, all right, cool. Uh, listen, this is what re- this is what indie wrestlers do. <laughs> right. they, they're trying to they get publicity. You know, they're trying to get they're thanking you for publicity. You're trying to get publicity, one or the other. Um, remember, um, <laughs> Everyone gives Conan shit, and rightfully so. But do you remember Robbie E. and his podcast? Oh, how yeah. Badly he wanted us to, yeah, to the take end of, on his yeah. podcast. The OVW. Yes. He, had a, he had a podcast, and, and then he was talking about OVW, and he kept uh, he kept telling us, yeah. hey, OVW is going to get big, and you guys are going to be on the, on the ground floor of it. We were yeah, like... yeah. And we politely declined many times. And he was right um, for that month where they were a big deal on Netflix. And people were like, hey, this OVW thing. And then they watched it, and they're like, oh, <laughs> What's his name over there? Jacko Morrison. What? What? The WWE, the NXT. What the fuck is his name? Robbie E. Now he's a. Uh... Oh, he's a uh, Robert Stone. Oh, Robert Stone. Robert yeah. Stone. Once again, I was this close to, to nailing that. Yeah. What, but, what did you um, say again? What'd you call him? I don't need Jacko Morrison. Jacko Morrison. Yeah, that, that's yeah, close. Um, Robert Robert Stone. Yeah, but uh, that's Swerving Keith Lee. What's What's next here? All right. Next is the battle for hot and flexible. Andrade versus Miro. Yeah, look, <laughs> we know these are two men who are opposed to doing business at times, <laughs> but we just saw Andrade do a number of jobs, right, in the tournament. Um, Miro, a lot of things don't work for him, brother. <laughs> All right, that that um, Fu Manchu gets struck a lot. I know. Old, uh, <laughs> yeah. old, old, old yeah. 2B Miro, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he uh, he had enough of bury me softly, brother. The casket matches against the Undertaker and the other company, and he has decided that um, a lot of things don't work for him anymore. So he does a lot of pre tapes. Rich, this man <laughs> that is the master is of being set backstage. The yeah, that, he is pre-tapes. always backstage. So uh, yeah, I don't know. He he's he's gonna beat this man up because um, you know his wife's been hanging out with him. So that's that's the. Uh, Story with the alternating lowercase and caps behind this one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
and they'll uh, it should be a pretty good match. I mean, I think they'll throw bombs and have All a good right. match. Yeah, I just, sure. Just don't know if anybody will do the job. Uh, match added uh, right before we got on the air. Here we have a new eight man, but I believe it's even changed since then. Is that true or not? Yeah, actually, I think it has changed uh, since. Since I put this up here. Okay. So you got Big Bill, the Don Callis family. Initially, it was supposed to be Kyle Fletcher and Powerhouse Hobbs, but it is now Kanosuke Takeshita and Powerhouse Hobbs. Uh, also, oh. team. So it's Big Bill, Ricky Starks, Takeshita, and Hobbs versus less sex gods, Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara, Sting, and Darby Allen. Now, Windhorse Fingers, why would they do that? I don't know. Well, see, normally when someone does Windhorse Fingers, they have a theory. I don't have one. <laughs> I was going to say I your was, theory is. I, I was hoping that you would have it. I don't know. Let me let me see if there's anything on the uh, and maybe the uh, the note of chat can let us know if there's some some haps on Kyle Fletcher that we we're just not you know privy to at the at this exact time if he got hurt or something. But he was on the show and he didn't. Did he wrestle? I don't even know if he wrestled on. Um... He never wrestles. Kyle Fletcher Tekesha? or Takesha? No, Takesha never wrestles. I'm saying about oh. Fletcher, of what happened with Fletcher and why oh, he Fletcher. maybe didn't appear if he got hurt or something like that. I, I don't know. If, I didn't look at my uh, my Rampage spoilers this week, but uh, yeah, anybody can uh, can let us know. But anyway, Takesha has emerged from the mothballs that he's uh, he's been in, and uh, yeah, he's going to be uh, there with Hobbs and, uh, and Big Bill and Ricky Starks. What did you think of, I saw some people mention, you got Starks and Hobbs on the same team. Should they be uneasy with each other? Should they kind of not be on the same page? Would you like that little – like, is that a, is well, that a good callback to have them not totally be on the same page? Or are you like, I don't care? If we're, if we're truly restoring the feeling, they have to side-eye each other. Right. There have to be moments of distrust. These men blew off their feud with a lights-out blood match. You can't have them just be best pals because – this is 1986 WWF and they're coming out of the same locker room. You know what I'm saying? Like right. this company used to pay attention to details like this. And if they're distrustful of one another and they're jawing back and forth or they don't want to tag each other. Yeah. They don't I'm tag okay each other. Them. Ricky Starks walks over right. and then tags, you know, to catch instead of power. Us makes Hobbs. it a point, like right. stares at Hobbs, right. has his hand out, mm-hmm. but then slaps to catch on the chest. Right. Like that's the kind of shit you want to see. And that I will suggest, by the way. But that that then I'll be okay with it, right? Because that's the ethos of this company. And it always has been. That Dragon Gate-like never forgetting anything. And these two guys clearly do not like each other. You would think that Takeshita is being inserted into the match because they want to do some kind of angle with them or have him involved in the finish. Otherwise, why make the change? Right. Or it's that Fletcher is the TV champ of ROH and you didn't want him to get involved in a fall or whatever. But I don't know. I feel like, well, you don't want Starks and Big Bill to take a fall. Hobbs can take a fall, but maybe you want to protect him. Mm, maybe. Yeah. Sting's maybe not taking a fall. Was, Darby's not taking a right. fall. Jericho's not taking a fall. I think it's Sammy or maybe they said, well, ah, fuck, we don't want the ROH TV champion to take a fall. Oh no! Hold on, hold on. Sting's team is not losing. That's a non. No, of course, Sting of course. So, lose. so it's somebody on this. So it's either Ricky Starks a champion, Big Bill a champion. Before it was Kyle Fletcher a champion or Hobbs. They must have said, "Now nah, yeah. we want to protect Hobbs. We'll put Takeshi in there. He's not a champion anywhere." You just figured it out. Yeah. Takeshi is getting pinned. Yeah, because they don't want to pin Fletcher. You're right. That's what it That's is. Probably what it is, but unless Fletcher has like an injury or a, an emergency, or if right. there's something going on with Fletcher with that we're not privy to, obviously that's a different story. But um, yeah, the, 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 um, the other thing is, you know, this all came together because Omega is in the hospital. So they just, you know, I, I see a lot of people being critical. I thought with the angle last night, they were going to do a three way for the titles is what I thought they were going to do. I thought they were going to do Jericho and Kuvera versus Bill and Starks versus Darby and Sting. Um, because it looks like that's what they were setting up. And I was like, oh, are they going to put the tag team titles on Sting before he leaves? Like, but then, you know, a couple minutes later, they announced an eight-man. I see a lot of people burying the eight-man. But what, like, I don't know. I can't get on him too hard. Who knew that that Omega was going to have diverticulitis or whatever the fuck Yeah, they, Yeah, they didn't you know plan on Kenny Omega having diverticulitis and, and being out for the next couple of months. As his stomach yeah, gets so, ripped open. <laughs> so, yeah. It, it, so sometimes that shit was, happens. All right, let's put, yeah, and, and the idea, and look, they're putting Sting on the card. Who wouldn't have been on it? Like, you know, so that's their answer, and I think it's a good one. Uh, so... It's fine for what it is. 
Um, they're also trying to sell some tickets because let's be honest, MJ Hogan ain't selling them all, and they're they're barely under nine well, thousand. Yeah, so. Update. That's right. Latest update, they were still under 9,000. Right. So, so Sting, hey, this is your last chance to see Sting in the area. Uh, right. It might be a way to, to sell a few more tickets before the showtime. And obviously, Starks and Bill were going to lose to Jericho and Omega and then move into a feud with the Young Bucks. I mean, you know, a blind man could see that coming. But now they've delayed whatever plan they're going to have. I, You know, so, you know, this kind of... This sets off a lot of dominoes here because now, now the Young Bucks don't have this program that they were going to move into at the start of the year. And you now the titles are staying on Starks and Bill. And, you know, so, but, you know, this is just an unforeseen thing. It's nobody's fault. Right. I got Shit sick. happens. What are you going to do? Shit happens. So let's have a cool match and, and go out there and, and, and do some cool I have stuff. A, so. This may be a hot take. Everyone, see, you know, the, the big criticism is. Don Callis gets all the attention, right? With the Don Callis family and everybody, he's got this stable and they all just kind of stand around behind him. I disagree with that. I don't have any problem with that. Now, let me explain. Okay. I don't have a problem with Don Callis cutting all the promos and, and, and I hear people saying, oh, he stands in front of them. Are we fucking serious? Like, so what? Like he's, he's the one cutting the promos. He's the manager. And also the story is they're like brainwashed by him. They're his minions. That's why he's standing in front of them. And he gets heat. It's not like his promos don't get heat. I don't have any problem with Don Callis getting the attention, quote unquote, and being the mouthpiece of the group. You know what I have a problem with, Rich? The fact that they never book any of these other guys to wrestle. Right, they never That's wrestle. The I would have Hobbs every single week on Rampage and Collision beating guys. I'd have Takeshita on every single Collision beating guys. That's the problem. The problem isn't that Don Callis talks for them and stands in front of okay. them. The, the, the downside is those guys stand there and look like badasses, but you never see them fucking wrestle and they never beat anybody. <laughs> they never even wrestle. And it's like, all right, so you agree with me. I, I have no problem. No, with anybody. That, those are dorks. Yeah. They, you want powerhouse Hobbs cutting promos? No. It, it, it Callis is perfect. That's the point of a manager. Right. And he gets heat and he's good at it. And he's great at his job. Like that. I have no problem. The problem is Kyle Fletcher, Konosuke Takeshita, and powerhouse Hobbs never fucking wrestle. That's the problem. They should be having six man tag team squashes like they had a couple weeks ago on collision or rampage or whatever it was every fucking week on one of these shows and they should all be having little singles feuds little mid card singles feuds that they win by the way with one of the thousand people in the back who are collecting dust who are never on tv right and you could have been doing this all along and having Takeshi to have winning a feud against whoever the fuck Sean Spears right little side you know a little three week feud these guys should be wrestling and working. That's the issue. The issue isn't Don Callis, who does a phenomenal job and, and does nothing but get heat. So, uh, no, I, that's, that's my – I thought it was a hot take. You agree with me? No, because I, I think Callis rocks. I think Callis rocks. And I know a lot of people hate him or for some reason. I don't know. People don't like real heat. You know what I mean? People don't know what heat is. And it's like, oh, no, he, he's, he's annoying. And it's like, well, yeah, that's the point. You know, It reminds me a lot of the Jericho thing where they're like, oh, yeah, Jericho loses to these people. But then, then they come out of it. And what do they, they – they don't do anything with them. All right, well, blame Tony yeah, then. How's that Jericho's Don fault? Callis's fault. Yeah, it's, it's – no, I, How is it – the presentation Jericho's... rocks. I love. I love the music. People hate the music. I love just the slow I droning the music. music. I love the music. Yeah, oh, I live! It's music. so good too. It's just like you're you're annoyed live. Like it just pisses you off. The music is so fucking annoying live, and, and it, it gives you a weird energy and it makes you feel weird. The whole problem is, fucking the guys got to wrestle. The guys look like badasses. They come out. They look like a million bucks. They got a great. You know, the manager, a great talking head. And then, yeah, it's just they need to be on TV more. And that's not, yeah, I, I, that is not a Don Callis problem. They're doing it just fine. When, when Callis is in the ring cutting promos and those guys are behind him, that's perfect. The problem is then he doesn't unleash those guys on the rest of the roster, which they he needs to do. They never fucking wrestle. Right. Why does Takeshi to never fucking wrestle? I, I don't know. So that's, that's the issue there. Um, you know, Chris Jericho gets squashed by powerhouse Hobbs. And... You know, and then comes out on TV the next week and says, yeah, he kicked my ass. And he's like holding his ribs. And then people blame Chris Jericho because there's no follow up with Hobbs. Like, it's kind of the same theory. Like, that's not Chris Jericho's fault. He did everything he could do. Show me another top star who's that selfless to, to lo- who constantly loses every feud he's in. It's not his fault that the booking doesn't follow up with these people. And it's not Don Callis's fault that Tony Khan never books these guys to wrestle matches or win. It's 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 ridiculous. 
So I just want to, I keep forgetting to talk about that on the Dynamite review, so I'm glad I was able to do it here. What's next? All right, what is next is another match that got added today. Uh, Blackpool Combat Club, Claudio Danielson, as well as Mark Briscoe and Daniel Garcia versus Brody King, Jay White, Jay Lethal, and Roosh. Eight-man tag with everybody else from the Continental Classic that are not in the finals. I love this. This is awesome. Great match to book for the show. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be badass. A bunch of dudes are going to be wrestling. doesn't need a fucking story. It just needs – just do it. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm all in on it. These are the 1992 WCW Saturday night matches that yep. we've been begging this company mm-hmm, to do. Mm-hmm. These are just – this is just a meat slapper. Yep. These are just guys slapping each other in the chest, sweat flying all over the place. Their hair is sweaty. It looks like they just stepped out of a shower because they're out there working hard under the lights, and they're just having a match because these four guys want to beat the shit out of those four guys. Why? They don't even know. Who gives a shit? They're just out there. It's a to fight, and they've wrestle. been told they're in a fight, and then they're going to go out there, and the bell's going to ring, and they're going to fight. That's all. That's how you restore the feeling. <laughs> yep. Tony Khan. This is a perfect representation to- of, of the match that you, you've you talked about before. I forget what the match was that 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 you said this about, but I I, I want to get this in the lexicon, but I don't, it's, it's a little tougher to get in the lexicon than some of our other stuff. Yeah. It's the one where, where we were talking about a match, and you said, what's the story? Go fuck your ass. That's the story. And I, this yeah, the, is that the, sort of match. Yeah. yeah. It was someone. It was the WWE fucking hardcores complaining that some match didn't have a story. Right. And it didn't. And, I, you know, what's the story? The story is go fuck your ass. That's the story. <laughs> right. It this is a go fuck your ass match. This is a go this fuck your ass match. This is a go fuck your ass match. Yeah. Right. Yeah, enjoy this. Go fuck your ass, man. That's all it is. It right, guys being story. dudes are going to go in there. The bell's going to ring, and they're going to beat the fuck out of each other for 12 to 18 minutes, and then it'll be over. And then, yeah. A Why fucking not? year ago, I was talking about how this company had too many stories. And now Dave Meltzer's saying it. Once again, I was ahead of the curve. There's too many stories in AEW. We don't need fucking micro stories for every fucking match. Some of these matches don't have to have stories. And this is perfect. That's right. It's a go fuck your ass match. <laughs> We're gonna, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to get that in the lexicon. It's a little tougher. We just gotta keep saying. It. <laughs> I think if we just keep saying that, so I, I I'm Everyone establishing steals it all here. Of our shit. They'll steal that too. Right. Exactly. So too. this is that sort of match. This is a go fuck yeah. your ass match. It's just it's happening because yeah. it's happening. Go fuck your. You know what I mean? Like it, who fucking cares? It's happening. This shit's right. what you need. WCW Saturday Night. Let's do it. Uh, and then final two matches. Those bo- these are both on the pre-show. Uh, Hook and Wheeler Utah for the uh, FTW Championship. And then a 20-man battle royal for a future AEW TNT Championship match. Participants, TBA. Maybe it's all of the Devil's Henchmen will be thrown into the ring uh, uh, to yes. find out. But, uh, yeah, participants, TBA on the battle royal. And then Hook versus Wheeler Utah. That's what we got. Yeah, I got to tell you, it really would be great if the uh, two – ROH tag team champion guys were in that battle royal and just got unceremoniously dumped like seventh and 11th out of the match, just as guys that are in it. I think that would be, Oh, the uh, devil's uh, henchman. Yeah. The devil's henchman. Number one and the <laughs> yes. devil's, the devil's henchman. Number two. And then they don't even, they're not even factors in the story of the match. Like one guy just gets tossed out like seventh. Right. And then the other guy just, you know, takes a double clothesline from from you know the fucking bear country geeks and you know he's the 11th guy out <laughs> yeah. and, and and it's not even the, outrunners, oh, there it goes. the outrunners team up to take out <laughs> devil's right, henchman number right. two you know yeah. they do the thing hey, they where might... they're like you know they're both lifting his legs up and he's going ah, yeah. ah, ah, and then they like some other guy comes up and helps the outrunners throw yeah. him out and they all celebrate right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got him <laughs> like yeah. Oh, there goes the devil's henchman number two. He's out of here. And then maybe Excalibur clarifies that it was actually the devil's henchman number one yeah. that was actually tossed out. Yeah, that that would be uh that would be fitting of the ROH tag team champions. <laughs> and then in like a year's time, they're still just kind of, you know, there. It's devil's henchman number one and devil's henchman number two. You're like... Yeah. So um Hook has to beat the ROH pure champion, right? He's not gonna lose that dopey fuck the world title again nah so, nah i don't think so yeah maybe so, i don't I'm think sure. so not not in the pre-show not in the pre-show who are some wrestlers historically you got me thinking with these devil's henchmen who were like main event guys who were part of like a a unit like that or they were they were goons for main eventers and then they kind of just hung around after that storyline was over and then they were jobbers because I know there have been people like mm, that. So they were jobbers. One, one of the one of the examples I was going to bring, not jobbers, but the one that I always remember is the acolytes, because they were part of like the the 
the Ministry of Darkness, you know, the Undertaker's Ministry yeah. of Darkness. It was Farouk and, and Bradshaw. Then, like, the Ministry was gone, and then they were just the Acolytes for a long time. And it's like, all right, guys, it's over. <laughs> like, the thing's done. And they were the Acolytes for, like, six months after the Ministry of Darkness was gone until they finally then, you know, transitioned it into the APA, you know, the Protection Agency or whatever. But for a long time, they just came out and were the Acolytes. And it was like, who are you Acolyting for, man? <laughs> They're done. It's over. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Like you don't have a leader that you're an acolyte for. You're just you're just you're calling yourself. Yeah. Right, and Midian would do that for a while too. Midian was just kind of hanging around. Paul Wedding brings up the perfect one: Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. Remember those guys? The, they were edges guys. Edge, they, edge were the, they were they were they were the edge heads or whatever, and then they just kind of hung they around. Keep, now here's the key: Did they keep that gimmick after <sighs> they were separated from? Edge? Yeah, see, that's a blind spot for me. The uh, the edge heads, you know. I could two thousand nine, right? I could list you an entire WWF card in 1994, but yeah, what happened with the Edge heads after uh, they broke up with Edge? I, I don't know about that. Yeah, what about like Colonel Mustafa? Long after Sergeant Slaughter, <laughs> he had did. He did last a little longer. And, he did last pretty long. You know, <laughs> he was like hanging around, you know, lose doing nothing but losing. Yeah, but I know there's examples of that. I just, yeah, well, I'll, hey, I'll in AEW, Sean Cito brings up a good one. The current JAS that's just kind of like floating around with each other, and they're like, yeah, I guess we got to be yeah, friends. Yeah, I they're yeah, they're not I jobbers know, per se, but they're not they're not not jobbers. I don't know. Angelo and Matt Menard aren't too far off. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. The, the one that yeah, comes to my a... mind immediately is is the acolytes, and and Midian was along with that too. Like he separately from the acolytes was also like, ah, he's still Midian. And it's like, all right, yeah, I don't know. Like, might have yeah, to none of these are the energy. None of these are no, quite I know the energy I'm looking yeah, for. I know, but, but I, 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 an it's hour from be now, WCW. it's got to be WCW. It's got to be WCW. It's it's a, such be. a WCW it's thing. Gotta but I'm just trying to it figure is. out what WCW team it is. It's absolutely a WCW thing. I um. It's just, it's just none of these are quite the proper energy. An hour from now, I'll blurt one out. Right, right. Out of context, you know. Like, it's got a little bit of, like, a one. Brian Adams energy when he joined the NWO, and then the NWO Wolfpack happened, and then they all left, and he just kind of was in the B team still for a while. You know what I mean? Like, that sort of. Yeah. But Again, it's not the same. You know, it's like. there's It's like a yeah. 1993 WCW team, but I can't figure out which one it is. But, yeah, I, I will absolutely 100% think of it. At 4 a.m. today, wake up in a, in a sweat in the middle of the night and go, God damn it. Yes, of course. It's blank. That's but, uh, what it was. That's right. the energy. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm um, having trouble with it now. You know, but these these examples, it's like, I, you know, it's like J.K. Simmons and Whiplash. You know, not quite my tempo. These are just not quite the right energy. Right, right. They're right, just right. not quite the right energy for me. It's close, you know. But it's it's not quite the right energy. We, we will I will come up with some before next week if I don't think of one before the Sims. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that is a world's end. So, again, uh, we are going to be doing Instant Reaction Live immediately following the event on Saturday. So make sure you're subscribed to the $10 tier, uh, flagship patreon.com, patreon.com slash voices of wrestling and voices of wrestling.com slash patreon. Uh, make sure you subscribe now. Do not wait until the day of or an hour before. Uh, get ahead of it. Subscribe now. Listen to all the bonus audio that we have uh, on the Patreon as well, including the brand new episode of Brett versus Owen, uh, covering December of 1993 in the Bret Hart versus Owen Hart feud. You got the Thursday Dynamite review uh, that just came out. A bunch of other stuff that we have available for you right now. The November to Remember Eddie Gilbert special, uh, which people are still kind of pouring through and listening to, that is available for you as well. So, uh, yeah, ten dollars unlocks everything we do, including written uh, content as well. I did a uh, Iron Claw review uh, that's on there as well. So, yeah, plenty and plenty of stuff. Uh, on the ten dollar tier, but uh, make sure you subscribe to listen to the AW World's End uh, Instant Reaction Live coming up Saturday night. Always a great time in the Note of Chat Room as well. We always uh, we always put that over too. Uh, really fun energy in there. People are just chatting away and, and going nuts and and sticking with it for the rest of the show. Even though we're you know that thing is going until two a.m. three a.m. Eastern or whatever. Uh, there's still a lot of people in there chatting and and, and having a good time. So uh, yeah, always a blast. AW World's End this Saturday night Instant Reaction Live flagship Patreon. Dot com. And, and listen, it's a good time to get on the ten dollar tier for the live instant reaction because there's a big show happening the week after too. That pretty good, decent chance that there might be one as well. Indeed, can't commit yeah. to it yet. Yeah, we're gonna try to figure that out. Which um, so. I guess let's let's. Let, uh, I'm gonna talk about that real quickly before we get to uh, CM Punk versus Dom at uh, Madison Square Garden. A lot of people saying, "Hey, where's your Wrestle Kingdom preview? Why are you guys not r- doing Wrestle Kingdom on this show? What about Wrestle Kingdom? What about Wrestle Kingdom?" Um, we are gonna do Wrestle Kingdom on next week's flagship because we're going to do next week's flagship 
on a different day. We are not going to do it on Thursday because obviously that is the fourth. That is going to be the day of Wrestle Kingdom. No point in doing that because we very well might be doing an Instant Reaction Live for that show. Well, that is pending. Uh, still, we'll see how our schedules kind of work out. But we want to give a proper preview to Wrestle Kingdom, so we will likely be doing the flagship. I think we thought about the second, right? January 2nd, I think, seems like the right day to do it. Um, so that will probably be when you get the Tuesday. flagship next week. That'll be Tuesday. The second is very likely when the flagship will be next week. So well, I was well. Listen, I was waiting for you to commit to that because I I can do I can go Tuesday. So let's do it. If you're all right, so there you go. It's going to be a Tuesday flagship next week, which will be the second, which will give people well. If you're a live listener, you know that that preview will be you know, almost what, 38, 32 hours before the show or something like that. And the free version of the show will drop on Wednesday the third. So you'll still have about 12 to 15 hours to listen to the preview before the show. So yeah, we will go on January 2nd, Tuesday. So if you, if you're planning on listening to the live show, it'll be on Tuesday of next week on the second. Right. And as far as instant reaction for Russell kingdom, we good chance, but we got to move around some things and, and figure out schedules. If it's not official, work, but not official, not official, official, but uh, we're, we're going to try to do that. So do not, if you're going to subscribe for instant reaction, Russell kingdom, I cannot tell you to do that. Subscribe because you want to not subscribe for the Russell kingdom, uh, instant reaction, but we are doing world's end for sure. And next week, live flagship, like you said, we'll preview Russell kingdom, uh, and then pending on doing something for, uh, actual Russell kingdom itself on, uh, on, on Thursday. So, Busy week coming up here with a lot of wrestling around the world. But uh, let's get to some of the other wrestling uh, that did happen. And this was the day after Christmas at WWE's Madison Square Garden show. Uh, 15,831 get put into Madison Square Garden uh, for the WWE Live Holiday Tour. And the, uh, the match everybody had their eye on. CM Punk's return to the WWE ring for the first time since January of 2014. Now, before we talk about the actual match itself between CM Punk and Don Mysterio, which I saw, I believe you saw it as well, right? You watched the entire match that's that's been floating around yeah, on YouTube yeah, or course. whatever. So, yeah, yeah, um, of course, yeah. The big thing is that number, that 15,831 is a big old number, and that's a number that WWE has not been doing at Madison Square Garden a lot lately. And they were not on pace to be doing this number. They were at, I think, eight or 9,000 uh, even a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and the inclusion of Punk really drew a ton of numbers to the show. Now, was it also in addition to people getting, you know, Christmas gifts? Yeah, there was probably some other things that happened. But there's no way you can look at that number and where it was a couple of weeks ago and not think that CM Punk got a lot of people to go to that show to watch his return to a WWE ring uh, for the first time since January 2014. Something that, yeah, Roman... They put Roman on Madison Square Garden shows. Yeah, trickle, a little trickle, trickle of, of tickets here and there. They put Cena on, tickets sell. Not much going on for this show. You put Punk on and it sells. I'm just saying, that's what stars do. Stars sell tickets. And uh, CM Punk sold tickets to this Madison Square Garden show the day after Christmas at Madison Square Garden. So uh, what would you make of that number, the 15,831, before we get into the actual match itself? Oh, yeah, it's a monster house now. To be fair, it's not the 22,092 that Bruno and others would pull every single time in the garden. Okay. So let's pump the brakes uh, on, on it. This being some, you know, an enormous mass square garden number. I mean, Bruno put 22,092, the number that's embedded in everybody's brains. Okay. At this point, that was the true garden sellout for years and years and years, decades and decades, even after Bruno. And uh, you know, with their stupid stage set up and everything else uh, you know, they're, they're nowhere near that number. I mean, they were, you know what? Uh, over seven, th- about seven thousand fans short of that. They were a good house show number away from the old twenty-two thousand number of uh, of really filling Madison Square Garden. Uh, you're dead on with the Roman Reigns thing. Roman Reigns has never, even during the, the hottest of the bloodline, was never able to fill Madison Square Garden, even by their new standards of filling it, which is under sixteen thousand people. Um, so, yeah, we, we've litigated that many times where they would add Roman to shows. They'd sell a couple hundred tickets and then they'd add Cena and sell a couple thousand and, you know, and still lie up to like 13 or 14,000 when there was really 11,000 in the building. Um, so, yeah. Now, I will offer this, though. You know, when they announced Punk and Dom, they were at about 10,000. So just to play devil's advocate, right? Do we think they would have done the same or similar business had they not announced Punk? Or do you think Punk is what really put it over the top? I am of the opinion that I don't think that they, quote unquote, fill the place. Uh, I'm still uncomfortable calling it that with only 15,000. 
without Punk, maybe they do 13,000, maybe they do 12,000. But to be fair, when they announced that match, they were already around 10,000. So I do think that that needs to be noted. Now, whatever they sold after that, you have to attribute to Punk because, Rich, I don't even know what the, what was the, like, official main event of the show i don't even know it was i believe it was a seth rollins versus let me get the exact uh match here for you but i believe it was rollins and mcintyre i want to say let me let me clarify that to be sure yeah it was it was rollins and mcintyre there was also a bull rope match with cody rhodes and, and, and and shinsuke nakamura on that show as well all right so obviously all the oxygen was taken up by punk coming back and um yeah i would attribute it's hard not to attribute the success of the show to him, even though to be fair, a lot of those tickets were sold before they ever announced them. But when you look at the television ratings that his quarter hours have been popping and everything, um, you really have to be super cynical to think that he didn't have uh, something to do at minimum. Now they're touting this as the biggest house show gate in the history of the company, which I don't doubt because that's 16,000 people in Madison Square Garden with modern ticket prices and jacked up prices for this show in particular. But this is kind of like every time an NFL quarterback signs a new contract, they are now the largest contract in, in NFL history. And it's like, well, that's not impressive because now the next guy is going to top that. This is just one of those things that's constantly being topped because the next time WWE sells out a house show, that's going to be the most profitable because this is with inflation. You're constantly topping that. And I'm not trying to pour cold water on it, but um, you know, it's, 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 it's something that sounds more impressive than maybe it really is. But, uh, but yeah, you know, they did a really nice house and look, it was only a couple years ago where they had like what? 8,000 people. Right. This day after Christmas show. It got pretty dire there for a while. Yeah. It got pretty dire. Yeah. So, you know, it's another feather in punk's cap. I mean, this is kind of the story, and we the key here is how long does it sustain? How long can they milk the return of CM Punk? It's like we said, they were smart to debut him on a house show because now you have his first TV match in your back pocket. You have his first pay-per-view match in your back pocket. You didn't burn off everything at once, right? If you would have debuted him on TV you don't have or on paper, you have nothing left. It's his first everything. So this is slow rolling it, and you make money on this, then you do his first probably want to do pay-per-view before tv right i would say so so you do his first ple or whatever i feel gross even saying that and maybe save the tv match for after that yeah yeah. you you do rumble i think you do rumble and then i don't think he's on tv until sometime between rumble and 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 mania but for a for a match you are like an actual match right 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 because that can be a hook you know like for a tough week where you're going up against tough competition or you want to pop a number Oh, here's CM Punk's first match on Monday Night Raw since 2011. Here's CM Punk's first match on, you know, did he pick a brand yet? I don't even know. Uh, he is. is a Raw right, superstar, um, Joe. He's right, a so Raw go. superstar. So then, so then you still have his SmackDown debut in your back pocket for whenever the fuck you do that E2, you know? So it's like you slow play these things and you milk it for as much as you can. Now, the match itself, well, that wasn't it very was, good. Uh, that was not, not very great. Good. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't great. And now it was he was looking for a guy that's been spending all this time in the gym and looks fantastic in those NXT performance center photos. He looked a little not in great shape here. No, he enjoyed the and holidays. Was, yeah, it looked like he enjoyed the holidays for sure. And he was and you know, I'm not being mean. It's just we're judging his performance. He was gassed pretty quickly, and it wasn't exactly, you know, you know, this wasn't a uh, stardom high speed title match. <laughs> it was so, not, yeah. I was gonna say Clay, yeah. it wasn't done uh, rookie doy out there. It wasn't uh, right. <laughs> Toy so, Yoshino know, out there. Uh, they were uh... <laughs> he was gassed pretty quickly. This wasn't Azumi against uh who would she face in something like that? I don't know. Uh you can go um, with uh yeah, you can go with, uh, a bunch of places you can go there. You tell me Starlight uh, Starlight Kid. Yeah, I was there gonna say go. Starlight Kid would probably be the way I'd go. Is she still like 15? Like, uh, what's her I deal? think she's right. in her 20s now. I believe she's now in her right. 20s. So she's becoming a starlight woman these days. But uh, no, she's, right. I believe, right. in her 20s. So, so uh, yeah, I mean, look, and, and Dom isn't exactly, you know, he's not exactly Nick Bockwinkle out there. So it's, it's you know, this wasn't a great wrestling exhibition. There was a couple spots that completely fell apart. And that, look, we all know Dom stinks. And, you know, you have Punk, who's very rusty, who didn't look that great on his second return to AEW, he had a lot of good multi-man tags where he didn't have to do the brunt of the work. He had an excellent match against Samoa Joe 
in Wembley. And then he had some spotty stuff. He had a spotty singles match with Ricky Starks where nobody liked the finish. And um, I can't even think of any other singles he had on the second run. But, you know, a bunch of decent little tags where he was able to blend in and a good match against Samoa Joe. But he wasn't nearly as good as he was on his first return. His first return, there were times where he was legitimately great. Um, This, you know. But I'm not going to judge him till, too hard until he wrestles on TV. All right. It's a house show match. It's against Dom. But I think this is all by design. It, it, it really is. And I, I, you know, I did a guest spot on uh, Jesse Collins' uh, Gentleman's Wrestling Podcast last week. And we talked about uh, the state of, of AEW and, and, and WWE in, in 2024. And one of the things we mentioned about CM Punk is how he is. Think about what WWE would be without CM Punk right now. Think of the life, uh, the energy of this company without CM Punk. There's nothing. Because they, for all yeah. the credit that they got in 2023 about building these guys, there is nothing, man. Everybody feels cold. Everybody feels like they're just kind of spinning their wheels. There's no real juice or energy. So Punk was such a shot in the arm. But the thing about that is, too, that because he's a shot in the arm and because he's such a, a, a game changer in a lot of ways and business-wise and just energy-wise, you got to protect this guy every way you possibly can. And he's 45 with a very big injury history as of late. He's a guy that you're not going to be able to have those kind of matches. And I don't think you want him to have those kind of matches that he was having on that first run that he did in AEW. Because you know what? Look, he didn't last. <laughs> his body couldn't hold up for that. And he's been an off-injured guy throughout his career as well. So the idea now is I think that you're going to have this guy doing very, very basic stuff. Now, will he ramp it up for a WrestleMania? Most likely. And, and this is a guy who who does appreciate the art of wrestling. So I'm positive that when you know WrestleMania comes around that he's going to bust his ass and try hard. But I think between that, you're going to get matches like this. Or he's just not going to wrestle. I think he's a guy that wrestles only a couple times a year now. I think he's going to wrestle at, at, at the Rumble, of course. But again, that's a match where you don't really have to do much. You can just kind of hang around and toss guys over and do, you know, you don't have to take big bumps or whatever. I think he's going to have matches like he had here with Dom where he didn't really take any bumps. He didn't really do anything. They did a very basic boo, yay, boo, yay, side headlock, up oh, the heels coming in, up, oh, wait, I'll stop the heel, uh, boo. You know, it was nothing. It was basic as fuck. Yeah, and when they, and when they tried any, and when they tried anything that wasn't basic, it fell apart. Right. Cause Dom's, fucking horrendous so Dom's pretty shitty and yeah dom can only do the dangerous danny davis match right and and punk is rusty and was never exactly you know fred astaire on his feet anyway right so, but i think that's know, by design he, though i think that he's going to be in a lot of matches like this if he is going to be wrestling a bunch on house shows and yeah. stuff it's going to be very basic stuff because i think that they are scared that this guy is going to overwork himself get hurt and then go away and then you got nothing you know what i mean that juice of that company think of this company right now without punk what are you building towards? What's I, I, going on? You know, when, when you said that, I thought to myself, who's the second hottest person in that company? Who and is I don't it? have an answer for you. Yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, Cody doesn't feel hot right now. Mm-mm. Maybe Nakamura with the new heel persona. I, I, I really don't know. That, exactly. I, I don't... <laughs> exactly. Like, Punk has been a quite the, the you know, the, 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 the boon to them because it's like, yeah, now all of a sudden there's a lot of juice and you're like, oh, intrigue. And oh, where's he going to do? And is he going to do this? And he's, there's a lot of stuff going on because, man, right now, shit, you take a lot of that. You take Punk out of this company. Gunther, is Gunther the next hottest guy? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But, LA Knight's not Gunther anymore. Has good matches, but is he a business? Nah, he doesn't feel hot from not a business yet. perspective. No, not LA not Knight. Yet. The LA Knight doesn't feel quite as hot. Right, as that's done. Does. That's over. Jey Uso doesn't feel as hot as he once did, and and Cody uh, does not feel as hot as he once did. Uh, Seth is fine, I guess. If Seth's your guy, I don't know about that. Drew is fine. Like everybody else is just kind of in that weird. Yeah, bloodline like, has bloodline has cooled off. So right. Roman. Um. No, oh, Orton. Orton's a good one. I guess Orton would be the one. But but at the end of the day, he's Randy Orton, right? What, like, what do we do? Are we really doing the Orton? Are we really pretending that this because, is gonna... because the thing about it is, he hasn't been around in a while. He's back on the gas because TKO obviously doesn't test anybody. Um, have you seen AJ Styles? I mean, geez. Oh my god, so that AJ like... body. That AJ body was when I saw him. I audibly like, yeah. I was like, whoa, my god. He's never been that big. He's twice as big as he's ever been. Holy you shit. See Randy, you see Randy Orton's face? He's got the big face. He's, he's got, got the, the puffy face, face again. Now. He's got the legend yeah. killer puffy uh, Randy um, Orton face again. We're back. He's got so, the Zac um, Efron face <laughs> from, uh, from Iron Claw. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah, I, I mean, you know, that's not going to sustain because at the end of the day, Randy Orton is Randy Orton. Right. The and bell's going to have to ring and then Randy Orton's going to be out there. So. And and the newness is going to wear off, and he's just going to be 
upper mid card. Everybody respects him. Never as big a star as they told you he was Randy Orton. Um, yeah, I don't know. Look, look, I look there. It's not going to take much to get any of these people over though. You know, uh, uh, you know, or maybe, I don't know. Maybe it will. I don't know. I mean, maybe I, Paul's not that yeah. good at booking. That's what I'm kind of trying to say here. I don't know. Like, well, he's not, I mean, his shows are painfully dull. Um, there's really nothing happening. What are the hot programs on the show right now? Bloodline 3.0 with Judgment Day. Yeah, it, it centered around Ron Killings. <laughs> right. You know, it's like, like comedy 51-year-old R-Truth or whatever. Yeah. I don't know if he's 51. He's got to be in his 50s at this point, right? Did he, did he pass the 50-year-old threshold? Probably. He is 51 like, years old, Ron Killings, yes. Yeah, you know, and um, what are the other hot programs? I mean... Gunther has vanquished the Miz and now he's going away for a little while. Um, he said that in the backstage deal. Um, so that's over with reigns. And is, what is he doing right now? Like he's back. <laughs> he's never there. Yeah. He's just kind of not there ever. So I don't know. Like he is, he is there now, but it's like he, he, you know, he had a confrontation with Nick, all this of all people last week on SmackDown. Um, you know, so the idea is Nick, all this is someone who's going to stand up to him. You know, if we're building to Roman Reigns, Nick, all this, I swear to God, could you think of a worse match <laughs> than, than bloodline tribal chief Roman versus fucking Nick, all this? I mean, I, I that's bad. That's, that's going to so be bad. bad. Yeah. Roman wa- prancing around the ring going general manager. Yeah. <laughs> like you ain't nothing. <laughs> Tell me yeah. what to do. I tell you what to do. You know? Right. And, and, and you know, Heyman, Nick Aldis. As Heyman shakes in the background. Yeah. Just, God. Yeah. His jowls shaking. <laughs> right. You know, his fucking shaky jowls. As, he the <laughs> as Roman goes, and, I'm the tribal chief. I run yeah. the things around here, not you. I'm the as he does. Smack down table. <laughs> right. As he does a, a shitty headlock. <laughs> Eight yeah. minutes, yeah. And it's not like all this is Mr. Excitement himself. <laughs> right. you know, no, no. Like, no, uh, Mr. Electricity Steve Regal over there, but uh Well you know, Actually yeah. he's he's closer to Mr. Electricity Steve Regal than Yes, uh, that's yeah. exactly who he is. Right. Yeah. He's given that nickname as a rib. <laughs> right, but, right. Exactly. Uh, no, I know. <laughs> but uh yeah, so that's good that'll be but I don't think that's what they're doing. I think it's just, you know. Or maybe they are. Who no, I, I, mean, I don't think so. I think they're doing. Who does he have left? Um, you know. yeah. Yeah, I think AJ. Now they're going to have AJ win again, and then he's going to face but, AJ. Great. Hold on now. Uh-oh. Let me propose to you. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember when Taz, the human suplex machine, they did a favor. They sent him to ECW to beat Mike Awesome. Right. In the triple threat. When Mike Awesome jumped to WCW, they had Taz come to TV the next week and get squashed by Triple H. Right. Eat a pedigree in the middle of the ring. Right. Could it be that Nick Aldis is like the spiritual NWA world champion? Oh, okay. So you have the big dog at the head <laughs> of the table, right? I'm not sure they care Squashing. this much about it. Right? Right. That's a light bulb moment for me. Is it? <laughs> That's a bad yeah. light bulb. That's a really they're gonna, dull light bulb. They're gonna, it's a 40 watt, but it's a light bulb <laughs> right. nonetheless. It flickers a little and, bit. You have to tap it a few times. Right. Oh, there it is. There. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Fine. yeah it's the, Do I have to it's replace this? Ding, lamp. ding, ding. No, it's fine. It's right. Okay. <laughs> right. You know, maybe that's their train of thought. Yeah, right. that's a bad thought. A little one ups, <laughs> little one upsmanship with 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 Billy with that Billy. shot across the bow at uh, at Billy right. Corgan and Lightning One Productions. Send in yeah. a message to the NWA fans. <laughs> Take that, Lightning right. One. <laughs> could be it. Um, no. sure, it could it could be. I don't I don't think it is, but sure. Uh, anyway, great. Uh, so yeah, the, the the punk match was fine. It, it was it was pretty boring. And... It really wasn't. It was pretty bad. Yeah, it was actually kind because... of bad. Yeah, it was pretty terrible. And uh, <laughs> I, I will say it, it again. I think it, it's hard to tell from like a, a guy recording it on his phone or whatever. But I, the paradox of WWE fans not giving a shit about the, anything that happens between the bells, you kind of heard it again there. It's like the they're really excited about the entrance. 
they were really excited occasionally when they would do the boo heel stuff, but then the actual work themselves, they didn't they didn't give a shit about a lot of the work, and they were just well, kind of ready for. You still got it. You still got it. Yeah, we got the you still got a chance, which is uh. It's like three minutes in before he did anything. Right. Yeah. I okay. Like you don't even have to earn that with that crowd. They're there to chant, and you could hear it from the guy They're recording there to it. Chant. The guy recording it tried tried to do like nineteen yeah. different chants every ten seconds. Yeah. He was trying to do a chant. I'm like, dude, shut the fuck. Whatever. Up. I don't know. Maybe on your – yeah, there were a couple different versions. Oh, the one yeah. I saw, this guy was just like, TNA, TNA, uh, uh, Jungle Boy, Jungle – he just kept trying to start chants. And I was like, shut the <laughs> fuck up. Yeah, I was like, TNA, what are you doing? There's nothing related to TNA going on here. What are you talking about, dude? Like, it's just Amer- – T- sometimes American wrestling fans just love to start a chant. That's their favorite thing to do. But, uh, yeah, you know, you just film – you film yourself singing along to Jey Uso's – theme music and and that's what you do that's what you do when you go to a WWE show anymore but yeah the, the, i don't think they were really reacting much to the actual work but then again the work was not good so i get why you might not react to the, any of the work going on so i don't know all right i've got some uh contract season notes we did this last week so i will throw these at you you give okay. me a quick pithy thoughts got it okay i'll start at the top wwe wishes to extend cody now fightful reported that uh they want to extend cody and cody is open to it and it is expected to happen at some point dave Meltzer reported that it was a done deal in october fightful came back saying that they could not confirm it's a done deal but they fully expect it to happen so uh let's just assume that that goes down do you have any thoughts on wwe extending cody about a year and a half before they have to um, I mean, I guess it makes sense because I think that they they fear what we talked about last week that Cody could, if he wanted to, get into a very good negotiating battle with WWE and AEW and waltz right back in AEW and be an absolute god to those fans. So I think they got spooked and probably said, "Let's get this." Just we took Punk, you know, we got Punk, we got that little, you know, uh, uh, we got one up on them. Let's not let them get an, uh, another one on us. We'll just sign this guy as quick as possible and and maybe give him a, an offer he can't refuse. And Cody's probably for now happy and and, and okay, just you know, getting that WWE money and, and and sticking there. So I think, uh, yeah, it makes all sense in the world they would try that. And for Cody, you know, you don't have to sign a five year deal, you know, but another year is probably not the worst thing in the world to to stick with WWE for another year and then see where it goes from there. My thought was there's no reason for Cody to do that, to sign an extension at this point. He should play it down to the wire and work both sides against each other and get the most money possible. And my thought process was if he signs this extension and Meltzer says that he has, then that might be a tip-off that whatever happened with Tony Khan You're you're never going back. Yeah, that you're not getting back there. Yeah, because why would you... Now, WWE obviously doesn't think that because why would you offer him an extension this early if you know he can't go back there, right? So WWE offered the extension for the reason that you just said. Let's nip this in the bud, not even tempt fate, and make sure we keep this guy because he could swing the momentum back in the other direction. Right, and you never know. Like something could happen in the next year where Cody gets pissed at WWE and then goes, yeah, you know what? I thought I could never go back, but now you guys have done this, this, or this, or whatever. You know what? Let's see what, you know, hey, Tony, Give me an offer I can't refuse, and, and I'll send it back. You know what I mean? Like that, A lot can happen in a year. So you know what? Maybe just say he wants to be here for right now. He doesn't want to go back there. Let's sign him. Yeah, so my thought was if he has signed it, I feel like the relationship between him and Tony is pretty fractured because, you know, they were both committed to silence on the exit. And there have been some rumors and rumblings as to what may have went down uh, because otherwise, to me, there's really no incentive for him to re-sign with WWE this early. Um, it's Bailey has resigned oh. with WWE rich. Damn what it. Do you think of that <laughs> um, good for her. That's all I'll say because she is not good anymore. Shot. She's shot. She is completely shot. And anybody assuming that she would come to AEW and be anything is out of, out of their mind. And they haven't watched her wrestle in the last couple of years. She's done. Look, she made the very smart move to, to re up there and stay there where she's comfortable and where they can yeah, utilize her in a, lot, a of lot of different ways that are not getting in the ring and wrestling. She can make a lot of money being a, a you know occasional wrestler and a, a talking head and and all that sort of stuff way better idea than uh, than her trying to go to AEW and try to prove you know something she's not going to be able to prove herself anywhere else so she's she's over to those fans already she's physically shot um she could have a job for life there she's making a lot of money i could totally see why she would stay she goes to AEW she's going to have to kind of prove herself 
in that company and to those fans. And she can't do that anymore. So um, totally understand that. The shop stored Zelina Vega has uh, has resigned with AEW. Your thoughts, mm. Richard? Uh, my thoughts are. W- oh, 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 I said AEW. Yes. I think. Has resigned with WWE. Right. Shop Zelina store. Vega. Puerto Rico's very own. Remember when she cried and lost in five minutes? The union rep. Yeah. Um, She got her union, so I get it why she would stay there. I mean, she she fought for for Twitch streamers. She got the union. And a wrestler's union, and she got it. So why would you, you know, why would you get rid of that anytime soon? Um, All I can say about that is I hope Malachi Black was a part of that deal, too. So uh, he can go. Yeah, who could who could possibly give a fuck about Zelina Vega? Right. I really don't care what she does. No, couldn't possibly um, care less. Yeah. Well, yeah, actually, I do. I don't want to watch her wrestle. So, <laughs> so WWE is probably the best spot for her. Right, yeah. that's probably the best spot. Right. Uh, uh, we talked about this a little earlier. Diana Perazzo, a free agent yeah. on the market. Diana Perazzo, where would you like to see the Diana Perazzo land? Um, I think anywhere would be fine for me. If she goes to WWE, that that's fine. I think she probably adds a little bit to that uh, that that group. Anybody assuming that she is going to come to AEW and be like the savior of that division is is probably overstating what she can be. Uh, and what she is like if aw signs her though that's not a bad signing for aw but honestly i thought impact was probably the best spot for her but i get why she might have gotten a little bored by that and a little annoyed so uh, or maybe not annoyed but you know wanted to try something else try something a little different so it's either WWE or aw i mean WWE's had many opportunities to sign her over the years and never did but obviously they're 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 very different than they were uh before but hey aw's had chances to sign her and, and, and really hasn't either so uh, i don't know i'm not sure what she her next step is but i if I was her, I'd probably choose WWE, to be honest, because I think that's probably a better landing spot for her. But AEW, I, I think, would be fine as well. And they got to they gotta, they gotta choose her, though. Right. right. Mm-hmm. It's like, I choo, choo, choose you. Yeah. Right. The, but the, the, someone has to choose her. So, I don't know. We'll and see. that's kind of been the long, because everyone's always like, oh, yeah, here we go. I mean, the, the, people have had many, 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 many opportunities to sign her, and, and nobody ever really has. So. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting. But yeah, I, I think a lot of people are overstating. I, I think she's good. I think she's well, a very she was, good hand. She was, but... in, she was with she was with WWE, right? You know, and and she's had matches in AEW, like not as their contracted wrestler. But um, look, she's going to get a job. That's the point here. She's she's too good to not get a job. Speaking of AEW, Sean Spears will be exiting AEW oh, at the completion of his contract chairman. on January. January 1st, he will be finishing up. He sent out a nice note on Twitter saying that it was a, uh, I think he said it was his decision, but I'm sure Tony isn't exactly, you know, that's, that's one of those contracts. You kind of just let lapse. Absolutely. That is a hundred percent one. You you tell the guy ahead of time, Hey, we're not going to resign you. And you shake hands and you go, thank you for everything. And, and, and you don't worry about it. Then you delete that line item. You know what I mean? You delete that line item on your spreadsheet. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I, I think in general, I would do that with are, so many guys on this roster. There's, they have a lot of those. Yeah, no, yeah, no, they definitely do. I, I think in general, people are too hard on Sean Spears. I, I like everyone doesn't have to be a star. Ah, good hand. I, you know, he's a good hand. You know, he has a reputation inside the business. Re- the wrestlers love him. Fucking love him. Okay, he's someone who people love working with. He's you know allegedly a great guy, and um, you know, people love wrestling him. He will. If he wants it, he will moonwalk into WWE. Oh, God, you yes. can write that down. Yeah. If he wants to work there, he will work there. And he won't get pushed, and everybody will mock him again. But wrestling rosters need every need someone in every role, up and down the card. Okay? The world needs ditch diggers, etc. Okay? And he fills his role. You know, I think the guy is perfectly harmless on an undercard. And I think that you know, it's like people are very, very hard on him for some reason. I don't know what it is, but he's constantly getting mocked. And I, am I super excited to watch Sean, Sean Spears wrestle? Never. But he's a prelim guy. That's what he is. And I, I'm not offended by his presence as a prelim guy. And I don't think his career is a failure at all. Is it a nice, nice career? He's been around forever. So Gavin Spears in WWE CW. Tune in to November in 2035, and we'll talk about 35. Gavin Spears. <laughs> you think you're going to get there in 2035? You know, all right. It's a little aggressive. But, you know, at some point, <laughs> right. we're going to get to Gavin Spears and, uh, and uh, you know, the whole WWECW gang. 
But uh, yeah, so Sean Spears. He's a guy that if AEW wasn't what it was when it first started, which was a very lean roster, like way more lean than people remember those early days of AEW, had he just been a guy that was just on the roster from day one, I don't think people would feel that harsh about him. They would just kind of be, but he was like pushed, you know, initially as like a guy and he got in a few with Cody or Cody whatever. Feud. Yeah. Cody and so, so people kind of were like, oh my God, what the heck? They're po- pushing this guy. But like, he's been, he's a good hand. He's an absolutely a good hand. And like you said, he can moonwalk into any roster. And if he wants to go to WWE, they will take him immediately. And he's a Cody guy and it'll be perfect. So yeah. Oh God. Impact would take him without a second. Oh yeah. I, 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 I mean, all those NWA would, would, would die to have a guy like Sean Spears, but impact would really, that would really be honestly a great landing spot for him. If, similar to Kazarian where Kazarian left AEW didn't go to impact. That would be great for Spears. But I also think that if, if, if he wants to work WWE makes a call to Cody and, and he's there the next day, if he wants to. Yeah. Th- look, the bottom line is if he wants work, he'll get it and he'll get it easily. So uh, Katsuyori Shibata has now officially signed with AEW and New Japan also wished him well and mm-hmm. told him goodbye. And I think it's a clean split. Now, I, I don't know. I, I, I shouldn't pick fights, but I, I've tried to tell people that he was no longer with New Japan. And I had all these nerves. Hey, he's doing he signed with New Japan last year. It was very clear. <laughs> that this man was no longer affiliated with New Japan. I don't care what they what contract they told you he signed at what point, you know, earlier this year or last year. So now we could just finally put all this to bed. He's done with New Japan. He is signed to the Tony Converse. And this is where we're at now with Shibata. So uh, it was very clear to me that New Japan, outside of that one Tokyo Dome match, just were not comfortable ever booking this guy again. And Tony Khan... You know, I guess he's got doctors who are telling him it's safe, and there's doctors telling Shibata it's safe, and I'm not even sure Shibata cares either way. You know, he seems <laughs> Don't like think he cares. The kind of guy who would just want to get in there. <laughs> but I mean, so you know, this was this was bound to yeah. happen to where it was just going to be made official. I mean, Shibata came out on one of those pressers and flat out said, "I would love to sign here," you know, through his phone. But he said that, you know, and and. uh the reporter asked him, I forget who it was. Are you even signed to new Japan? And he dodged it. Like he wouldn't answer the right there. You knew something was up with the relationship. Uh, he got nudged out of the LA dojo. He dodged the question at the presser. He flat out was begging Tony Khan to sign him. And now here we are. And new Japan just wiped their hands of him and said, all right, he's, he's your guy now. Good luck. No hard feelings. Uh, you know, in, 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 enjoy the rest of your career. So any other thoughts on Shibata signing with, uh, Tony Khan. No, no, that's that's I, I think the, the way to go, and, and and it seemed like the the obvious path forward. And I don't know if it was the Tanahashi appointment that finally made them say, okay, let's just make a clean break here uh, uh, from Shibata. But this this was long, long overdue, and I'm I'm glad we're finally there. Where now there's no more pretense, and, and he's officially done with New Japan, and now officially with AEW. So no, no, no. Yeah, no I just I just feel like there was someone with a lot of power who ne- who just was insistent that he never wrestle for New Japan again. Right. Right. They didn't want him, but they didn't, he wants to wrestle. Right, because he wanted to wrestle. And I think they even said so. I forget what happened, but there was that one weird quote that came out. And I, I, does, am I remembering this right? Like a couple – about a year ago, there was some quote from New Japan essentially saying that they would not, you know, medically approve him. Maybe. I don't even to, remember. I don't even remember. And then, like, he popped up on AEW a couple weeks after that or whatever. So, it, it yeah, it felt like it was time to get to this level of the split. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're here now, and that's that's the way to go. All right, one more, and then I have another one that's going to transition into a topic. Soberano Jr. has signed with New Japan Pro Wrestling for a one-year contract, but it is a dual contract with CMLL. So um, high-profile examples of this kind of thing in the past. Dragon Lee was a luchador who signed with New Japan, Mm -hmm, but unfortunately mm -hmm. his contract coincided with the COVID year, so he barely got a chance to work for that contract. And then there was Mascara Dorada, who infamously signed a one-year deal with new japan many years ago maybe 2017 18 somewhere in that neighborhood um and then they proceeded to do absolutely nothing with him <laughs> to, until to the, the point where we, ins- to, we we guessed or insinuated that uh, he must have done something just horrific and slept with somebody's wife right. or, or or something because we could not figure out what the fuck he, this guy could possibly have done which would make them never use him ever and 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 i mean he literally did nothing but multi-man tags right he did nothing and until the final month, when they finally did some programs with him for like one of the CMLL titles, if I recall, he wrestled someone for a CMLL I title. I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he may have had one other 
short program with for like the never title or something a low level belt maybe he had a, a junior title shot i don't remember i could pull up his cage match and look but um and the only other thing they ever did with him is he pinned captain new japan on a show which was actually a bigger deal than it might sound like because it was a junior pinning a heavyweight even though the heavyweight was captain new japan and they made a huge deal like he celebrated like he won the super bowl because that just doesn't really happen over there that often but then that really went nowhere it didn't build to a singles match or anything like that he just pinned him in a tag so the point here is New, J- New Japan doesn't have a great history with this sort of thing. Um, now, as far as Soberano Jr. goes, I mean, he just worked at the World Tag League Tour. He's got the height that they like. He's got good size. They treat him like a heavyweight. They book him like a heavyweight, which is important. And he has shown great, great growth and development from a character perspective in CMLL this year. He dipped his toes working Rudo on the Guadalajara shows, and then he eventually turned Rudo full-fledged in arena mexico and he's done a great job working rudo and you know so he's shown he can do both his work is exemplary there's not his work it, there's no problem fitting in he's gonna fit in just fine oh, in yeah. any roster in the world oh you saw that on, on, work- on the fantastic mania or not fantastic mania the uh, world tag league yeah he, he's gonna be perfect yes yeah so th- that's not gonna be a problem my question and that's why i brought up the prior examples i, I don't know how gato's gonna utilize him because there's not a great history there to draw mm-hmm. on when they bring these guys in on contract. So, I mean, we'll see. I, I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. Uh, but, we'll um, talk about it a lot next week, but I, I pretty much have no faith in any Gato booking right now, to be honest. So, um, you got to hold that thought. Yeah. Gotta I'm going to hold that till next week. But, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't get excited about any guy right now in New Japan, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll talk about that next week. A little more detail. All right, so these last two will transition into a full-fledged topic. All Japan Pro Wrestling ring announcer Fumihito Kihara has already left the company. He's been with them since 1989. Yeah. And Takeo Omori, who – he had an office role. I know that for a fact because when I had my All Japan connections, he was part of the office. Um, he is now no longer – did he work his last show? No, he has his final match. The 31st. So yeah, they're going to give him – He's got his farewell match coming up with All Japan, so that two long-time employees of All Japan out the door, which makes you raise an eyebrow now that they're in bed with the WWE. There's something going on with WWE because Charlie Dempsey's coming in for that. He is the the, the challenger for the, 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 the Nakajima Miyahara winner will face NXT's Dempsey, who is Regal's son as most people probably know. And he's very good. I mean, if you like that style, he's excellent. Um, is this just a one-off? Is this Regal getting his kids some work? It might be because we're not, the WWE side isn't hyping it up at all. Right. They're not They've saying said anything. nothing. Right. I, that, my initial worry was, oh God, this is a big time thing. And it should be your initial worry. Anybody who doesn't have, anybody who's listening to this show that likes Japanese wrestling, that likes all Japan, that likes anything, this should be a, oh, God, I hope this is a one-time thing. Trust us. Trust us. Trust us. Trust us. We said it many, many, many moons ago when they were invading, getting their grabby little paws in on the European scene, and we said, oh, God, this is horrible. This is not going to be good. And what happened there? What did that happen to that scene? When they were getting their fucking paws all over the indie scene and here in America, we said, oh, God, this isn't good. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. People said, no, no, no. You guys are overreacting. We were right on both those cases because we're usually more right than we are wrong. Um Yes, I was initially worried, but it does not seem like from the NXT side there's anything going on here. So it may have simply been Regal talking to Hideki Suzuki or something like that and saying, "Hey, do you have a can I can I get something for my son? I'm trying to get him, you know, work across the world." And they said, "Sure, why not? Okay, fine." I, I don't know. I don't know, but God, I hope so. God, I hope it's a one time deal because we do not need. Uh, WWE getting their hands in the Japan scene, especially not with all Japan Pro Wrestling. No, it, it's a little scary that some longtime employees are exiting around the same time that this is happening. It's it's a little scary. And it could also be financial um, too. Uh, I mean, it, it is it, could it is be. It, it, the Japanese wrestling scene is is rough right now financially for for a lot of companies. I'm sure all Japan is no exception to that. But um, it now, is. Now, to be fair, they're doing better. But they are yes. doing better. But I'm, so, I, I think nobody is doing great. I don't think anybody is really you know having a great time at the at the Christmas party with all the money they've made this year. Um, it could just be simply a case of Amori, you know, probably having a pretty decent 
contract, given that he's been there since, you know, fucking 1993 or 92 or whatever uh, when he debuted. I think it was 2,245 matches in All Japan for Wrestling I found uh, over the course of, of, of his career. So it may have been simply the case that these guys were making a lot of money and they were, you know, trying to find out how they could get a little bit more lean in, in, in certain ways here or there. But it is ominous, like you said. It is ominous that it happened at the exact same time as as this announcement got made too. So uh, hopefully, hopefully a one time deal. Uh, I think Dempsey will do good in that role, and I think he'll he'll work there. But uh, let's hope that uh, nothing else happens here. But I, I do. I will say well, that I am a little more glad that, like you said, from the WWE and NXT side, they haven't said a fucking thing about it. If Dempsey wins, it's a big problem. Then we got some problems. Yes, if Charlie Demp- <laughs> if he wins, then okay, we can come on the show and say, okay, what's going on here? Yes. So, I mean, obviously, if it, if we're not being clear, we want WWE not having their claws in anything having to do with Japan. I mean, we all saw what happened in Europe. It's a little different. That was an easier scene to crack for a number of reasons. Number one, it was all indies, okay? Number two, it's a far more similar culture, the United States, and in particular, the U.K., uh, so for all those reasons, it was a little easier. You know, you would think that the promoters and the wrestlers themselves in Europe were more apt to be marks, for lack of a better term, okay, just for clarity for the listener, for for WWE and wanting to sign contracts or do business with them because of them growing up with it. Whereas culturally, the it's it, Japan or Mexico, the two other predominant wrestling cultures, it's WWE has been trying for years to crack into these cultures and into these wrestling cultures and, and, and take, and they've struggled on both fronts because it's culturally, it's harder than doing it in the UK. Um, Plus a lot of these Japanese promotions are owned by gigantic corporate conglomerates. You know, if you're talking about Noah or new Japan, these are big companies. Uh, They're not as big as TKO. Well, I, I, I'm not actually, I don't know if Noah's parent company is, I shouldn't say that, that I, I don't know. Someone would know better than me, but um you know, Bushi Road. Yeah, I think TKO is a bigger would be a bigger company than Bushi Road because Abima is a bigger company than than Bushi Road. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cyber um, fights, and I don't know if Cyber fights cyber under. Fight, yeah, I don't know if they're under another company or they're the larger. They're under company. Abima, right? It's all. It's. it's uh, uh, I think they're. No, I don't know if. I forget. One's I, above the other. Yeah, I, I forget what's going on there with with, with cyber. Cyber fight, agent. But... Cyber agent is the parent company. Of right, Abima. right, right. Cyber right. A, of Abima and Cyber Fights and all of that. So Cyber Agent is the company we're talking about that owns Noah and DDT and all that. Um, and they're a massive. So the point here is, it's let's different see, than their D- revenue in 2019. That's the newest, the latest one we have. I guess is was 30 billion then. So. With, it's a big fucking company with five thousand okay? two hundred and eighty two employees. So yeah, they're they're, they're you're not they're... gonna you're not gonna push them around, <laughs> right? Okay, so that's my point. Where you know dealing with a company whose revenues were thirty billion versus dealing with fucking uh, Jim Smallman. Okay, this is not the same. So that's the point I'm trying to make here. Okay, so it, it's it's not just culturally, but they're dealing with bigger companies now. All Japan, as we know, are effectively an indie. So if WWE wanted to get their claws into somebody, right, they'd want to go after a company like that that maybe has the legacy name but is clearly not doing well financially. I'm just – it's fair to be concerned. Mm -hmm. And that's when they heavily targeted years ago too. They they, they have for a while realized that All Japan is is, is there for the taking, you know, in some ways, for lack of a better term because they they, – they talked to them a lot <laughs> many years ago. They talked to a lot of guys, uh, and they tra- yeah they've tried to, they've tried look they've they've made runs at Mexico before, and you know they would get hot for a little while, but then culturally it just didn't work, and they'd have to tuck tail and stop. You know, look, I don't want them having anything to do with Japan. I don't want them poking their nose in. I don't want them look because we've seen how destructive it could be um, for other scenes. And um, all Japan has a good thing going right now. We've been praising them all year. Um, Hopefully it's just a one-off to get the kids some work. And I'm not even, if that's the case, I'm not all that. I think it'd be an interesting match. It's something different, but you have to be wary Mm -hmm. and you can't welcome that. And it's, um, there's some, uh, uh, another concerning thing that happened uh, here. I'm looking at all Japan's Twitter right now. And they're announcing a match for uh, Dempsey on the, on their 31st show, uh, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. And uh, they have Tatsumi Fujinami. Uh, he's going to be on the on, on the show. 
Uh, but they have him at listed as parentheses WWE Hall of Famer. So I try to look how mm. many other times did that account tweet that Tatsumi Fujinami is a WWE Hall of Famer, and uh, it was one other time announcing this match. Otherwise, yeah. they've never said that before. Now, to be yeah, fair, this, uh, this sucks. This sucks. He's not there all the time, so it's like I, I don't know. But it's it's there's a lot of WWE. <laughs> That's all I'll say. That it, we got a WWE NXT, we got a hashtag WWE, we got a hashtag WWE NXT. I don't like any of that. So, um, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we, we don't want it. Yankee, go home. We're not interested. No. I, I, you know, I, I don't I don't want any of this. You know, it's uh, maybe he's just working the month. Maybe he's working the tour. Right? Maybe he's maybe. And, and that would make sense. And I think what, what, what makes me a little more not as, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, is that it's that guy. It's William Regal's son who – Makes sense that Regal would would call somebody. Would make sense that this guy would work here if it was Baron Corbin showing up. You know what I mean? Like, right, you know right, what I mean? Right. Someone like that, I'd be a little more worried. You know what I mean? If if it was one of the, if it was just like insert WWE Performance Center person, like the, the fact that it's William Regal's son, I'm like, all right, I could buy that. Something weird's happening here. Somebody made a call and they said, yeah, sure, why not? You know. We'll, we'll, we'll walk in the publicity. It's fine. If you just want the kid to get some work and work Japan to kind of work in front of crowds, that's fine. I'm fine with that. You know what I mean? Like, so that, that, that makes me a little bit better about it that we're not getting four or five NXT guys, or we're not getting, like I said, a Baron Corbin or some guy that feels very WWE. Charlie Dempsey isn't WWE, but he doesn't feel like a representative of WWE in the same way that a lot of other guys would. No, yeah, well, we didn't have Kento Miyahara in the Iron Survivor Challenge. So, you know, that'd be another. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Red flag if they, they start sending guys here. Um no interest in it because we know that what their end game is. Mm-hmm. They're they're not your friend. They're not your friend. They're, not they're your never friend. gonna be your friend. They'll never be your friend. They just want to absorb you, they want to put shove you out, and they want to use you to uh you know they they, they, they want to use you to their benefit under the precipice that they're your friend. Yep. Like an aggregator. Like an aggregator, so yep. I might say. <clears throat> um anyway <laughs> um but uh yeah so say something rich no i'm uh i'm, I'm choked up here uh all japan for wrestling uh we should mention their show on the 31st uh the all japan mania x 2023 oh god it's mania in the title oh jesus christ i didn't even realize uh no, i'm kidding that, that's fine beetle mania was around way before wrestlemania was but um this is their um New Year's Eve event, of course. Uh, the thing about this, this match is going to be, obviously, it's going to be to have the big time, you know, Kento Miyahara versus uh, Nakajima match as the main event. So you have that, which is, is, is awesome. It's got a Saito versus Saito match to determine the quote unquote true rookie of the year. <laughs> Love that. That's funny. Yeah, El Lindemann funny. versus Dan Tamura. We talked about that match for the World Junior Heavyweight title. So we talked about this uh, show a couple of uh, weeks ago. Talked about it on All Japan uh, Pro Wrestling.tv. But. Uh, this is going to be available on Triller TV slash Fight as well, uh, live streaming on there. I do not believe English commentary because I don't think they have English commentary, and I don't think they're getting English commentary anytime soon uh, for All Japan. So uh, for right now, that is available on AllJapanProWrestling.tv if you want, but also if you are a Triller TV Plus member, it is available there. So if you're not, VoicesOfWrestling.com slash Fight. So you subscribe to Triller TV Plus, uh, and that will be available to stream on the 31st. Uh, if you do want to uh, ring in the new year with some All Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, that is available to, to watch uh, a little easier than it, than it usually is. So it's kind of cool. And they've done this once or twice before. I think they did a, a giant series show earlier in the year uh, on Fight TV. So if you're wondering, oh, my God, they're on Fight now. Yeah, it is It is something going on. Like, they did do that a little bit earlier uh, in the year. So I think it's just something that they thought would be a good idea, given given the time or whatever. So Trilogy TV presented by Fight. Trilogy TV Plus presented by Fight. Voices of Wrestling dot com slash fight if you want to subscribe uh to that one but uh dave boy smith jr he returns as well is that another is that a worrisome for you no okay because he's he, he's like a guy that has kimonos and stuff like that you know what i mean i think he's a he's very just a, uh, he's just a weird guy yeah he's know? just a weird dude that because uh, i think he's, he don't have anything to do with wwe no no he's he's done there now because they rehired him and then didn't use him for like four months and then fired him again <laughs> something like that it was very yeah. uh a uh, very weird thing, but uh, that is available for uh, All Japan Pro Wrestling uh, on the 31st. So we'll uh, hopefully talk about that show uh, on next week's 
flagship. Uh, you talked about uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Maybe let's let's briefly touch on that too. Uh, big news uh, from them. Effective December twenty third, uh, previous president uh, Takami Obari is stepping down, and the new president and representative director of New Japan Pro Wrestling is. Hiroshi Tanahashi. So for now, it is said that he will continue to be on the road uh, with New Japan Pro Wrestling while working as president. But uh, he said when they're in Tokyo, he's going to focus mostly uh, on being an office guy. So he'll still be on the road, but Tokyo, uh, he's going to be more so office guy uh, than a pro wrestler. But uh, yeah, I don't know. What, what did you make of that news? What do you think it means for New Japan? What do you think it means for the remainder of, uh, uh, of Tanahashi's career? I don't know what to make of it. Um, you know, I've seen some theories that maybe this was to satiate Okada to ensure that he doesn't leave. I don't know. I'm not privy enough to Okada's relationship with Obari or Tanahashi to rubber stamp something like that. I mean, it's possible, I guess. And there's been some other rumblings. There's always rumblings around this time of people threatening to leave. And that's always going to be the case now, especially with two American companies throwing a lot of money around, trying to draw guys away who get over in Japan. But, um, it's hard really to assess this until we see what kind of changes Tanahashi wants to make. And you would assume he'll be wrestler friendly. Um, he might have bad ideas. You know, it, it's, you know, the best players, as we know, aren't always the best coaches or GMs. Right. You know, we've seen that time and time again, LeBron James is a horrible GM and, you know, he's obviously a great player and, you know, um, for one analogy, but it, it's right. so president, yeah, uh, team president, Michael Jordan, uh, fucking horrific, <laughs> very unsuccessful. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did, did he ever have a team make the playoffs? I'm um, not even sure if he did. Maybe I think the, the Bobcats, uh, the wizards maybe made, I don't know if they ever did when he was, you sound I, look. We, it's it's not much. Obvious, yeah, let's, let's. Yeah, it wasn't a lot. Yeah, maybe and then, once or twice. Right, and yeah, then the Hornets certainly were not a uh, very successful franchise in the time that he owned them either. So yeah, no, very. Uh, no, I, I. They may have made it a couple times uh, during his his tenure, but yeah, n- never never very long runs. And certainly not the success he he enjoyed as a player. Now look, we've seen the booking office feud with the front office. I mean, look no further than the television title, which the booking office, which the front office. Uh, flat out told everyone was going to be a title for younger wrestlers and was going to be defended on all the house shows and all the matches were going to be free on new Japan world. And it was going to be used to create new fans. And then what does Gato do? He puts it on 40 year old Zack Sabre jr. And never takes it off of him. Right. I mean, there, there's clearly a rift there. <laughs> now him there's and Tanahashi clear... are going to be fighting for that. <laughs> right. And it, it, it's a clear situation where the booking office didn't want this title. And look, I reported at the time, all of this, that, this was a front office idea and they wanted it on young wrestlers. And Gato just said, I'm well, <laughs> that doesn't work for me, brother. Um, and he put it on a veteran and he's kept it on him, you know, and there's clearly disagreements and there has been between the front office and the booking office for some time. And maybe this was to, you know, Tanahashi who everybody likes and respects is the perfect go between. Maybe that's the idea here. Maybe just because business has been kind of, you know, dragging along this year that they felt that the change was ne- just the change was necessary. That's possible too. New Japan's not exactly doing gangbuster business right. this year, like everyone else in Japan. So, you know, I, I don't know. It's hard to say what kind of job he's going to do or what his philosophies are going to be. What does he think about American expansion? What does he think about New Japan Strong? What does he think about the relationship with AEW? What does he think about the relationship with CMLL or RevPro or other promotions in Japan? You know, just based on Tanahashi's change in body language and behavior when he was asked to wrestle other places like DDT against Hiroshima is the best example I could think of. He he, he often came across like he felt it was beneath him to work those shows. And to work those matches. Yeah, he doesn't seem like a guy who's and- going to – he feels like a very – a guy, a, 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 just judging by what's happened in his wrestling career, feels like a guy that's going to be a little more isolationist than a lot of the other recent New Japan guys who have been very strong that's about – just speculation. Right. You know, right, and that's right, right. just speculation. But if you go back and watch those DDT matches, he looked like he wanted to be anywhere but there. And he ate up Hiroshima. There was a tag match where he didn't, you know, look like – you know, I, these were years ago, and I'm just going off memory, but – it felt like he was big time in the place, you know, and 
he worked heel when I don't think necessarily that may have been the plan. Yeah, you know, he just and 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 you know, so I it, these are all things that will change with him in that position. And we're not, we don't know what the changes are gonna be. So I, you know, there, there's a lot of different ways and a lot of different things to look at. You know, I, I did see something about him saying he wanted to see more title matches on some of the house show stops and not just doing all the title matches on the, on the, on the tour ending shows or in Corican, you know? So I think that would be a positive change. That's something that screams to me, we need to get attendance up. So when we go to Gifu or wherever the fuck, or some village in the middle of nowhere, if we give them a tag team title match or a, you know, a a fucking, you know, name your title. That isn't the IWGP heavyweight title, you know, name any other belt. If we start giving these these shows some some title matches, maybe we can draw a couple dozen or a couple hundred extra fans, and then over the course of a tour, over the course of a year, that can make a big difference. So you just have to keep your eye on some of the different things that they do. You know, maybe since he's been to America, he doesn't see any value in the American expansion or doesn't see any hope in it now that AEW is in play. Um, you know, maybe he has a different philosophy than Obari. Or maybe he, you know, after working with Tony Khan, can't fucking stand the guy. Or maybe he fucking loves him and wants to do it. See, these are we all things no we're going to learn. Yeah, we have no clue. But we'll know quickly. I, I think he's going to make changes quickly. I, I, I think, especially in Japan, it, it, it does feel like when guys do take over as as presidents or whatever, they they it does feel like very quickly you, 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 you feel their presence. You know what I mean? Like, it feels very obvious. There's not a whole lot of chains of command that, that are going to stop him from doing what he wants to do or, 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 or you know... Um, you know, be, being able to make the changes he wants to make because he's the dude. You know, what I mean, he, he's he's fully in charge now. So that that's got me very very interested in in in, in what the changes will be and, and what will be obvious. And I think we'll talk about it again, uh, you know, again more next week as we preview uh, Wrestle Kingdom. But I think now is probably the time that uh, we, we you know maybe uh, think about maybe moving on Booker. We, we we've had very stagnant booking for for years. Maybe maybe this is time to you know big split and big changes uh, across uh, the, the entire company. We'll see though. I don't know. Yeah. And I don't know his relationship with Gato or Jado. Yeah. No and clue, I would no assume clue. it, I would assume it's good. I mean, I, and I would assume that Tanahashi was already wielding plenty of power. I mean, if Tanahashi wants to do something, Ta- who's going to tell him no in terms of a program or a match finish or something like that, you know, this is no different than, you know, any big American star where, essentially you know like Tan- it's fucking hiroshi tanahashi right <laughs> you know what i mean like you're not you know no one no one's telling him no that that is no one in that locker room is telling him no maybe someone in you know maybe a suit maybe you know so um yeah so yeah i don't know maybe you know th- this will all play out you know it's not and, and who knows maybe it's more um ceremonial than anything else i don't think it is because that position is a position of decision making and has been, but maybe there's something to that too. Where all right, maybe we could spark our business by you know everybody loves the fans love this guy and we'll give him a title. I so I don't know. I, I'm waiting it out. I'm not going to recklessly speculate what any of this is going to mean or what's going to happen. Well, I'm going to wait it out and see. And I'm going to see what changes happen and what we can pin on him, and whether those changes are good changes or bad changes, and then we can start to assess his performance. But I don't know what he's going to be yet. So yeah, we'll see uh, what ends up happening with that. But as Tanahashi effectively uh, effective December twenty third, he is the new president of New Japan Pro Wrestling. So we talked about the uh, All Japan stuff. We talked about uh, New Japan. Let's talk about Dragon Gate because big news out of Dragon Gate from their Final Gate show just happened a couple of days ago. If you want a full review of that show, uh, it's available right now at VoicesOfWrestling dot com. Just posted yesterday. Uh, Case Low uh, wrote a very very good piece. Uh, reviewing the show as well as talking about uh, Luis Monte, the former Diamante who won the Open the Dream Gate Championship in the main event of Final Gate. So the story, you know, the the, the review is half, you know, the review of the show, but also just the 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 how this all happened, how Diamante went from a guy who was just kind of floating around and really doing nothing and and linking up with with Dragon Gate, you know, via Ultimo Dragon to now being the top guy in the company, the Open the Dream Gate champion. But uh, Luis Monte. Uh, wins the Dream Gate. Uh, what do you think of that? There's a few other title changes we'll talk about as well. But what do you think of of, of Luis Monte uh, winning the Open the Dream Gate uh, Championship? 
I think it's a bold move. I think, you know, obviously we talked about the cage match and that was one of the few Dragon Gate matches this year that really hit me on an emotional level that yeah. I became invested in. And I'm invested in his story as Diamante. He was a pleasant surprise in that company and one of the better workers. You know, he's still only 31 years old, by the way. He's been around forever, but he's still only 31 years old, which surprised me. I thought he was going to be in his late 30s. But um, anyway, they do this three-way match and they have him in there with Shun Skywalker and, of course, uh, uh, Kakuda, Madoka Kakuda, the champion who hasn't been a successful champion. I mean, let's let's call it like no, this. no, no. Business wise, it's um, not been good, and and in ring wise, it's been fine. You know, just 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 yeah. Fine. N- none of none of these champions are clicking. You know, whether it was Yuki Yoshioka, uh, Kakuda, um, you know, uh, Kai for a long time. Didn't he have it post? Yeah, Kai had it mm-hmm, post um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, COVID or whatever. But forget Kai. He's like a veteran. The two are Yuki Yoshioka and Kakuda. Just haven't worked. Okay. They they don't. Neither one ever felt like they were especially over. Kakuda, in fact, was cut a promo saying, I'm sorry for the small house. Like he admits that like he wasn't drawing fans. He's like, ah, I guess it's my fault that we have a small house tonight. What show was that? That was. Um, that was. The, Obey World? I believe that was. Yeah. No, 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 no. It was Gate of Destiny. Gate of Destiny at uh, yeah. at, at Edeon, the former body maker Coliseum. That was it. Yeah. He beat Big Boss Shimizu and said like, ah, crowd's a little light today, but uh, hopefully you all enjoyed it and we'll go home and tell your friends so you guys come next right. time. It was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. That's like, you know. Um, but, but, you know, like the only guy, it's like they all wilt in the role. Like we love these guys until, well, I've never liked Yoshioka, but in, in, in speaking in generals, you know, we love these guys until the titles are on them. And that's like, ugh, their charisma just disappeared. But um, Shun Skywalker is the one guy. He's been a constant. He's great as a heel. And, you know, the match was a three-way and, and obviously Skywalker and Luis Monte, who, by the way, I didn't make the connection between Diamante and Luis Monte until today. I feel like a fucking idiot. Monte, Diamante, Luis Monte. I thought like, I didn't never like anyway. <laughs> you thought it was like I, his I'm whole new name. Like, You're like, ah, Luis right, Monte. Right, right. All right. <laughs> and then I, then today I'm sitting there watching the match. I'm like, oh, Diamante, Luis Monte. Oh, okay. I'm a fucking idiot. Um, so anyway, the match itself, I thought it was a mess. It was um, a messy three-way. The three-way dance. Yeah. Which is always a, a rough go. Ref bumps all over the place. And then Skywalker's using a chair on Monte and beating him silly with the chair. And then Yagi, you know, the referee, recovers in time to catch him. So he DQs Skywalker and gets him out of there, which I wish they would have done with Jay White on Dynamite. Um, So Skywalker throws a fit. He's throwing tables and chairs around. They've got people dragging him out. And Monte is just out cold from these chair shots. And then Kakuda comes in. And then from there, they had what I what would, would be normally an incredible closing stretch of a big time world title match. The problem was everything before it sucked, you know, uh, very case close your ears, very bloodline like too story heavy. Uh-oh. The first two thirds, you know what I mean? Just all heavy handed story stuff. And yeah, I, I've not seen the match for the record. I, I, I'm sometimes making my way Dragon through Gate, it. Sometimes Dragon Gate gets like that, you know, and it either lands for you or it doesn't. And I'm just like. It, you know, but 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 once it got down to those two and they had this hot closing stretch, guys, you know, one count kickouts and Kokoda firing up and that shit ruled like they had the great closing stretch portion of a great world title match and Monte won the title and fuck it. I think it's a good decision. Why not? I don't know how long he's going to hold it because then Shun Skywalker came right back out and was like, I-, I want the first title shot, you know, and. <laughs> And he accepted. So that's going to be, and I think it's scheduled, I think for the 31st or something. I, I don't remember the exact date, but so it'll be, I, and I think there's a chance that Skywalker wins that. So I, I think that Shun might win the title back from him. But even if that happens, I think this was good to establish Luis Monte at that level. And then the feud that carries you through 2024 could be the long-term story between Luis Monte and Shun Skywalker which is a great story. And it's really the only thing in dragon gate that I've been interested in, in ages. So, um, I can't recommend the match case like the match. Um, so if you're, you know, a dragon gate freakazoid, like case, you probably will like the match a lot more than me. I I thought that it suffered from a lot of the things that dragon gate has suffered from post COVID. The crowd was fucking dead and didn't give a fuck about anything that was happening in this match until, you know, they did the angle with the ref and everything. Um, 
you know, they had like 2,300 fans in Fukuoka for it. I did not get a chance to watch anything else. I only had time to watch that match today. I will probably go back and watch the other title matches. Uh, there were a bunch of new champions crowned on the show, but I can't speak to any of it. So, um, you know, and Kato Kiyomiya is now a Dragon Gate champion. So, you know, he he came in with Alejandro from Noah, and they beat um, Kota Minora and Benke for the vacant tag team titles. So, Kato Kiyomiya working all over the place, you know, as he continues uh, whatever it is he's doing, probably trying to get out of Noah. You know, I've been kind of saying, hinting around and saying that for a while. I think that's his end game. But uh, new Triangle Gate champs too. Mm -hmm. But again, I can't talk about any of it. You know, I didn't love the uh, cage match has the Dream Gate match at 7.12. So they look, I didn't think it was terrible. That's not far off from what I would say. I'd go three and a half or something. I don't know. Three and a quarter. Probably three. The closing stretch was too good to call it a bad match. I just didn't like the first two thirds at all. So um, anyway, new Dragon Gate champ. Luis Monte. There you go. So that's uh, what's going on in Dragon Gates. And uh, yeah, so uh, as we said, we're just about wrapping up here. Uh, we will be back on Saturday for Instant Reaction Live for AEW World's End. Uh, so again, you want to subscribe to the $10 tier over at flagshippatreon.com to make sure you don't miss a second of that show. Uh, and then next week, the flagship will be on Tuesday. We made it official here Tuesday, uh, January 2nd. We'll be previewing uh, Wrestle Kingdom 18 and probably reviewing uh, some of these uh, Japan uh, New Year's shows. You got Noah's got a big show on New Year's Day. Uh, you got that big All Japan Pro Wrestling show that we talked about on the 31st. So we'll probably be watching those. But uh, it should be a really fun show. Uh, plenty to still talk about. You might be thinking, oh, man, they're going to be doing a show in a couple days. They're going to have not that much to talk about. We'll have Wrestle Kingdom to preview that always takes up a ton of time plus some big time stuff going on in japan that hopefully will be watched uh by that point too so we should be more than good to fill that up uh for next week so again that will be next week on the second january 2nd for the flagship uh live and then uh, if you want it on the free feed you'll be getting it on wednesday the third so yeah i think we're just about done here so voices of wrestling.com for obviously previews reviews and columns of everything we talked about uh throughout this show uh flagship patreon.com we've talked about it many many times throughout the show make sure you subscribe there get the thursday dynamite review get brett versus owen my look back at the 30 year anniversary of the brett hart versus owen hart feud uh from 1993 and 1994 wwf uh, and you're going to get the World's End Instant Reaction Live coming up this Saturday as well. So, uh, yeah, there you go. YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube uh, as well. Just search up for Voices of Wrestling on YouTube and you'll find us there. Uh, Discord. If you want to join the conversation on Discord, VoicesOfWrestling.com slash Discord as well. So, anyway, we will see you guys Saturday night. Uh, if you're not listening to the Instant Reaction, we will see you on Tuesday the 2nd for the Flagship Live. But that is Joe. I'm Rich. And we'll talk to you again next time. Take care. Oh, and I guess Happy New Year and Happy 2013, 2023 and all that stuff. So, <laughs> do you care? I mean, who cares? Who cares? Uh, new Year? Do you care about the New Year's? I don't care. I never care about New Year's. I don't, I don't care about the New Year now. <laughs> the New Year comes and people are like, all right, here we go. And I'm like, I don't know, probably a lot similar to the year before. So, you know I mean? so uh, hey, just, Happy New Year, uh, everybody. <laughs> one, one year closer to what will be etched on my fucking tombstone. <laughs> and that's the way right. There you go. You know what's going to happen? I'm going to. Do the stuff. I'm gonna watch wrestling. I'm gonna talk to you about wrestling like a bunch. You know what I mean? Like my life's the same every year now. <laughs> Nothing changes. Rich, we're 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 closer to 2030 than we are 2017. Happy New Year. My God. Happy New Year to you too, Joe. Take care, everybody. Bye. Music. It's not just part of our daily lives, it's part of our wrestling fandom as well. And it has been for decades. That's where this show comes in. Music of the Mat, the podcast devoted exclusively to the music of pro wrestling, hosted by Andrew Rich. Hey, that's me. Each episode delivers a different topic with a variety of great guests, fun conversations, musical analysis, and of course, a heartfelt pun or two. New episodes drop every other Tuesday on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or your podcast app of choice. Check out Music of the Mat only on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network.